And welcome to the Steve Mollsberg Show, ladies and gentlemen. First hour coming up, Republican Congressman from Arkansas, Tim Griffin, will be here. He's a member of the House Ways and Means Committee, and they voted today uh, to ask the Department of Justice to consider criminal prosecution for Lois Lerner in the IRS scandal. Then the panel, Newsmax White House correspondent John Gizzi and co-author of Eyes on Target, Scott McEwen, will be here. Ron Christie, former personal advisor to former President George W. Bush and columnist for the Daily Beast, will discuss uh, the uh, treatment in the press already of Bush and Cheney with regard to the enhanced interrogation report. All that, give me five and more on this hour of the Steve Malzberg Show. Five, four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studios, this is the Steve Malzberg Show. Be a part of the action by calling toll-free 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. Or email Steve at malzbergshow at newsmax.com. Here is Steve Malzberg. Upon arrival, what I saw were multiple victims in the grass area on the exterior of the school. Um, upon myself entering the building and others following behind, I was met in the first floor hallway um, by school resource officer Yakshi. Um, at that time, I observed that there was a male security guard with a stomach wound um, nearby to the officer. Uh, the officer at that time uh, had the subject, the 16-year-old subject, in custody and handcuffed. All right, folks, uh, that's a, a spokesman for the police. Uh, speaking about the stabbing spree in a high school, actually a Franklin Regional High School just uh, outside of Pittsburgh, uh, 20 people wounded, including 19 students. We have four seriously wounded, uh, and it was all done without a gun. It was done with a knife, by, allegedly by a 16-year-old uh, boy, a uh, student, who they say was shy and kept to himself. Uh, he went up and down the halls, uh, blood from one end of the school to the other, finally tackled by, uh, uh, you hear two stories, a, a security guard or principal and a security guard. Here's more from that police spokesman. At that point, we called in other resources, law enforcement, had emergency management, uh, medical, um, routed to our location. Uh, further checking of the first floor hallway um, revealed multiple victims apparently uh, by the knife that the actor had. Um, so our priority at the time was the people that needed treated medically. Um, you know, safety to the staff, the students are our priorities. Um, thanks to the EMS and the surrounding agencies with their assistance, um, the, the scene was quickly um, attended to. The injured were, were handled and taken care of. And uh, the, like I said, the subject is under arrest. Um, so the, the incident was brought to a conclusion at a fairly rapid pace. All right. Well, not rapidly enough, unfortunately, because when you're not allowed to have guns in a school, they didn't even have metal detectors in that school. Uh, when nobody has a gun, you know, I, I, I sadly chuckle uh, that a, a district official expressed relief that it was carried out, the attack was, carried out with a knife and not a gun. I guess, I guess, yes, I guess, but you got four people who were seriously wounded and you got 20 students or 19 students who were stabbed. Uh, this is outrageous and it's intolerable. And the way to combat this is with a metal detector. Of course, if you talk about metal detectors, you'll get a lot of people out there who will say, oh, you want to turn our school into a, you know, a, a war zone, metal detectors. A lot of high schools in, in New York City, if not all of them, have metal detectors. But also security guards or cops with guns or teachers who want to with guns. If someone had a gun, they could have stopped the guy with a knife a long time prior to him stabbing 20 people, quite possibly. Outrageous, just outrageous, sad, very sad. I hear Pierce Morgan's coming back to CNN for a week-long special on banning knives in the United States. Now, I'm not trying to make the, a light of this. I'm just trying to point out the foolishness and the absurdity of not arming people in schools in this day and age. It's a gun-free zone. No guns allowed. Come on in. 
try something, you'll get away with it, you'll get caught eventually, but see how many you can mow down. That's what our schools are today. Except the private ones, like where the president's daughters go, and, uh, and, and the host of uh, Meet the Press, his, his kids go to the same school. They have cops, ex-cops, security guards, they got guns, and well, they should. But so should every school in America, ladies and gentlemen. You can't risk this anymore. You've got to take a stand. You've got to make it known that if you try something, you're going to be stopped. You're not going to succeed. But, you know, hey, guns in a school? Oh, no, we don't, we don't want to do that to our children. No, it's better this happens to your children. I don't know what to say because there is no more common sense. Uh, we're hoping to be joined momentarily, uh, I'll let you know when, folks, uh, by uh, Congressman Tim Griffin and the Republican from Arkansas, uh, the Ways and Means Committee member. And today, the uh, House Ways and Means Committee voted 23 to 14 along strict party lines, as you might expect, uh, to um, send a criminal referral to the Department of Justice to consider criminal prosecution against the uh, former IRS official Lois Lerner, who, of course, took the fifth um, twice, two separate occasions. Now, the first time she took the fifth, she started with an opening statement and then took the fifth. Many legal scholars believe uh, that you can't do that. Once you, once you make an opening statement addressing the issue, you've blown your right to take the Fifth Amendment. So they want her to you know, be held uh, to account and to uh, come be forthcoming and tell us what she knows. Now, everybody's entitled to take the fifth, and that's a constitutional right. However, what is she hiding? Because we've heard from the President of the United States, and he never lies, that there's absolutely nothing here. There's no scandal, there was no impropriety, there's no nothing, no wrongdoing at all whatsoever. Joining us now is, and let's go right to him, is Congressman uh, Tim Griffin. Uh, Congressman, welcome, sir. Thank you very much for having me. I know it may be a little loud. I'm outside, but I'll try to. No, no, no. I appreciate your time. I, the life of a congressman. I know you're busy, and I appreciate your time, sir. So talk about the vote today to, uh, to uh, recommend a criminal prosecution to the Justice Department for Lois Lerner and what it, might, what it might result in or what it might not result in, in your view. Well, look, the Congress uh, has a role uh, as an equal branch to conduct oversight and to conduct its own investigations. And when it finds material that it believes, evidence, if you will, uh, that it believes uh, constitutes potential crime, then we have an obligation to bring that or take that evidence and information to the executive branch for review and potentially prosecution. And that's what we did in this case. Uh, when I was much younger, I served as a investigative counsel in the House Government Reform Committee, and we, uh, on that committee, I wasn't a member then, but on that committee, we referred matters to the Justice Department, and that's what this was. Uh, you know, this is what comes out of an investigation on the Hill when we get evidence of a potential crime, and we believe that uh, there is substantial evidence that Lois Lerner uh, broke the law, and we want the Justice Department to take a look at what we have uh, uh, pulled out of the tens of thousands of pages of documents that we've reviewed, and we want the Justice Department to consider uh, what we are presenting to them, and uh, we believe there should be a criminal investigation and potentially a prosecution. Do you think? And yeah, I'm sorry. I think, and I think the, I think. Once you get a chance to review the information, I think it sort of speaks for itself. There was uh, obviously a debate as to um, some did not want to make this information public. Others did. I believe that oh, no, I got my four-year-old with me. Others, uh, others did, and I think we have a an obligation to hey, we have an obligation to make sure the public knows uh, the information that we've gathered. Uh, and I think the public should make their voice heard on this particular issue. What do you think the response from the Justice Department will be? Well, if the past is any indication, uh, I, I don't have great expectations for 
of the Justice Department uh, as a general matter. But I do believe in this particular instance the, the evidence, the facts are substantial. And, uh, and I, I don't see how they could uh, refuse to take action, although they've, they've wowed me before with their boldness. Uh, but, I, but I hope that they give this information the due that it uh, deserves. And I think they, uh, if they do, they will act accordingly. Um, there's also a, a report of, uh, of, of an IRS uh, office, um, uh, and, and, and uh, they're, they're, they're investigating uh, the Vote for Obama stickers um, and, they, and, and, uh, and other campaign paraphernalia that supports Obama in an IRA office. How, how inappropriate is that, and how, how surprising would that be uh, for you to find that out? Well, I, uh, you know, I don't know all the specifics of that particular case. Uh, it would depend on whether this is, you know, an individual employee who is um, who has just uh, violated a particular policy, uh, or whether it was something more systemic. I, I personally think what's been going on with the, I mean, having people in government agencies that tend to vote Democratic is not a surprise. Uh, I think the real issue here is the federal government targeting its own citizens, and that's really what we need to, to focus on. Right, no, I, I, I agree. That, I, I agree. I think just, that's the, that this is one of the – I think this is an example of government abuse that really trumps um, just about any that I've seen. It's just my time on the hill. I just want to just uh, it, the the, uh, the Washington uh, Times reporting that uh, in one case uh, the Office of Special Counsel um, said that it was commonplace in a Dallas IRS office for employees to have pro Obama screensavers on their computers and to have campaign style buttons and stickers <laughs> at their office. Just uh, just to explain to the folks at home. Um, one more question on this: a separate committee tomorrow, I believe, is going to vote uh, to uh, hold uh, uh, Lois Lerner in contempt of Congress. Um, do you think that's going to come to fruition? Uh, I think the committee will vote, as you know, ultimately get something like that uh, prosecuted. You have to have the presidentially appointed U.S. attorney on board, and that's very unlikely to happen. I think our time is best spent focused on the ways and means. Okay, buddy. Um, four-year-old wants apple juice. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but I think our time is best spent focused on uh, the substance of, of what our committee put out. It goes to the heart of government uh, or uh, abuse of power, and uh, and uh, that's really what the most troubling allegation out of all of this. One, one more, Congressman. I'm going to let you go. Uh, you, you must have a heavy heart. The president right now is speaking at uh, Fort Hood. Uh, honoring uh, three sergeants who were killed uh, a, a, in the shooting a, a week ago today. You, of course, a, a, a lieutenant colonel in, in the U.S. Army. Um, you know, th th is the answer allowing uh, a, a men and women in uniform to carry weapons on base? Well, I think that uh, we need to take a look at, at uh, all sorts of options, but one in particular, we, we need to continue to um, uh, help those in the armed forces get the get the mental health uh, uh, assistance that they need. I, you may not know this, but I was the I was a, one of two prosecutors on a um, in a uh, on base shooting. Uh, the shooter back in 2005 at Fort Campbell unloaded a uh, 357 Magnum on his platoon uh, when they were in formation. Uh, fortunately. Uh, we were only uh, we only had to charge him with attempted murder because he missed all four shots. Right. Um, but uh, we got him, I think, 25 years in prison. Uh, you know, well, and there was nothing there was nothing really in that particular individual's uh, to indicate that he would do it. No, Congressman, no, I agree. Just, Congressman, I'm, unfortunately, I'm out of time. I'm up against a hard break. Thank you so much, sir, and I appreciate you putting up with the interview uh, during uh, your busy day. Yes, sir. We will talk soon. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank Congressman Tim Griffin, ladies and gentlemen. We're coming back with the Malsberg panel. Who will it be today? It's the Malsberg Show. You'll find out.
We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Malsberg Show. Tonight we are a country awakened to danger and called to defend freedom. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Once you cut a tree down, what do you do about the stump? Grind it down with a new DR Stump Grinder. The fast, easy, and affordable solution for stump removal. Thanks to the power of a world-class engine and carbide-tipped cutting teeth, the DR Stump Grinder tackles any size stump. With each pass, these teeth quickly shave the stump down, taking a remarkable 400 bites per second. In no time, the stump is completely gone. All that's left behind is a pile of wood chips. Get behind the power of a DR Stump Grinder to rid your property of tree stumps forever. Call 1-800-799-1157 for a free buyer's guide and DVD. Learn how you can try a DR Stump Grinder at home for six months. Savings of up to $400 and free shipping are now in effect. This offer won't last, so call 1-800-799-1157. Online at drstumpgrinder.com. Federal and state authorities urge every American family to have an emergency radio. It can save you and your loved ones from disaster. Now, Newsmax has an incredible offer for you. Get our weather band emergency radio free. This emergency radio picks up AM, FM, and the NOAA weather band. It even works without batteries. Essential in an emergency. Call the number below right now and you'll get this emergency radio plus two great publications, including the award-winning Newsmax magazine. Each month, Newsmax brings you the important stories you won't see anywhere else. Plus, you'll get incisive commentary from David Limbaugh, George Will, Michael Reagan, Ben Stein, Dr. Laura, and more. Ben Stein says Newsmax reveals the unafraid, uncomplicated, bare-knuckles truth about today's dangerous world. Mike Reagan says, I guarantee that you'll love Newsmax magazine. This emergency radio offer with Newsmax magazine won't last long. Order online or call the number on your screen right now. What can that be? 52-year-old male complaining of chest pain. Clear. If you suffer cardiac arrest outside of a hospital, you have just a 7% chance of survival. Hi, my name is Dr. Crandall. As a cardiologist, I've dedicated the last 30 years to helping my patients win the fight against heart disease. That's why I wrote the Simple Heart Cure, to show you how easy it is to identify early warning signs, make simple heart healthy changes, and reverse heart disease in just 90 days. You'll discover how to reduce your risk of heart attack by 61% lower your bad cholesterol, unclog your arteries naturally, safely lower your blood pressure, and so much more. This easy to read book shows you how to make simple changes to protect your heart. Dr. Crandall's best-selling book is available at bookstores everywhere or go online to heartcure211.com and get your copy for just $4.95. Hi, I'm Mike Reagan. If you're a senior or baby boomer, you may be missing out on some important information. Tens of millions of boomers are set to retire, yet many don't know that how you file your Social Security can dramatically change the amount of money you collect. That's why Newsmax created a special report offering you the best strategies to maximize your Social Security benefits. For example, this report reveals a weird trick that could help you add up to $152,000 to your Social Security payouts. It also shows how some qualifying recipients can add up to $1,000 to their monthly payments. To get your copy with our free offer, along with seven additional money-making booklets, simply go online. Newsmax says this report is a critical resource for anyone over the age of 50. So go to our website today and find out if you qualify to add extra money to your Social Security. Remember, it's your money. You deserve the most back in your retirement. What you don't know about Pope Francis will shock you. Bestseller, Francis, a Pope for Our Time, tells the real story. Newsmax says, Francis, a Pope for Our Time, rips off the shroud of mystery about this man. Now Newsmax has a special offer for Francis, a Pope for Our Time. Get it for just $9.95 and save $12 off the cover price. Plus, we'll send you a free one-year subscription to Newsmax magazine. That's a $40 value for free. Order now at popesagenda.com. Get off 
the sidelines and be a part of the show. Call Steve toll free at 1 877 Newsmax. That's 1 877 639 7629. Here is Steve Malsberg. All right, folks, it's time for the Malsberg panel. And uh, joining us uh, once again, as he uh, did yesterday, is John Gizzi, Newsmax White House correspondent. And we're joined by the uh, co-author of Eyes on Target, Inside Stories from the Brotherhood of U.S. Navy SEALs, uh, Scott McEwen joins us. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, Hello Steve. How are you doing? Good. Good to talk to both of you. All right. Um, as we speak, the President of the United States uh, just finished uh, speaking at Fort Hood, a memorial for three of the sergeants who were uh, killed uh, in the shooting a week ago, uh, to, a week ago tonight, uh, at that uh, that Army base, and uh, very, very sad. But um, you know, I, I, you know, it, it, he's a president who still how he has the nerve to go back to Fort Hood, how he has the nerve to talk about taking care of people when the first set of victims, uh, as recently we had one of them on as recently as the other day, still feels betrayed by the President of the United States because they're not getting what they need. They're, they're pro the promise was not kept to, to take care of them because they will not classify the first shooting as a terrorist act, so they're not getting the money and the funds and the recognition they deserve. What about it, Scott? Well, I think we have, I think it's well to note that we have two different situations here and that the President has blown both. I really believe that uh, as to the first situation, we had a direct act of terror. And I believe that that guy was defined per se, and, and everybody knows it at this juncture, that he was working on behalf of foreign nations and foreign interests in doing that act of terror. And now we have a situation where we, where we have a soldier who it, it appears, and I haven't, I haven't made my decision yet, but it appears from the record, was asking for help and was not getting it. And I think that it's really an epidemic we have right now with not only situations such as this, but all kinds of soldiers returning from the with with war wounds and with with uh, issues that need to be helped, and I really think they need to step up and do their job. Hello. What about it, John? Ah, well, I have to say that the uh, situation is a tragedy. There's no doubt about it, and I do think that with the way that veterans have been overlooked and frankly treated. Uh, in the last few years through cuts in the defense budget and other matters that were out there, the administration should really have classified the first act as a terrorist act and done for Fort Hood what was required. Um, this is not a pretty picture, but it is one that could have been avoided. I might add that one of the criticisms of the new budget put forward by Congressman Paul Ryan is that in, it does not cut in any way things that should be going to those who wear the uniform of the United States. Well, Scott, uh, you said one of the criticisms is that it does not cut or it does cut? Uh, 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 John, you said it does not cut? No, it does. It barely touches. Barely touches. Well, Scott, that's, you know, that's a touchy uh, subject, certainly. There were a lot of people really ticked off that, um, you know, John McCain, especially, and other uh, uh, veterans, uh, uh, okayed that uh, that uh, budget deal uh, a while back that um, uh. that did cut um, you know veterans benefits and and pensions even though uh, you know incrementally or, or or just by a small percentage they were really up in arms over that. Yeah, I really believe that, and I am certainly not arguing with you with respect to that, John. But I believe that that there was cuts made in this last budget, you know, as to the uh, as to the defense, particularly as to some of these veterans cuts. For not only retirement and things of that nature and let's face something you know not only are we having a situation where we have direct medical needs guys with limbs you know separated from their bodies things of that nature but we have 10-year veterans returning from war zones uh, an experience that the united states has never had before even with our biggest wars even with our world war ones our world war twos our vietnams we didn't have that kind of ex repeated exposure to war zone that we have now and, you know, there's a lot of guys and a lot of women that do need help. And I just think we need to focus as much as we can on doing what we can to get the proper amount of help to these guys. Because, I mean, I've seen it and I've seen it in the past. And obviously we lost Chris Kyle. There's allegations there of PTSD, whereas I don't know that's true or not. But I've had friends of mine that have been directly affected by this. And this is a real issue. This is not something people are making up. This is a situation where we have 
time, the money, and the permission. Yeah. No, I would say with Scott, we are in agreement. The previous budget deal, one which was supported by a number of veterans, as Steve says, is one that did cut veterans' benefits. Um, but the current plan, the alternative that Republicans in the House are advancing, barely touches them. In fact, Dana Milbank of the Washington Post notes that this day, in fact, that while Medicaid and other programs are cut uh, and overhauled in some cases, veterans' benefits are barely touched. Uh, the Ryan budget offers more for veterans. The previous budget that was done through fiat with both parties in Congress did not. All right, uh, the, Scott, yeah. let me, and by the way, we have a, a copy of the jacket, Scott, a picture of your, the book jacket, Eyes on, t on Target, uh, which we're putting up uh, right now so uh, the folks could see it. There it is, and a uh, great, great book, and uh, uh, I think folks uh, really should get it. It gives you a great inside look at uh, what those uh, brave men uh, go through and, and, have, uh, and do for this country every day. You know, we just had Congressman uh, Tim Griffin on himself, a, a former uh, uh, member of the, uh, of the U.S. Army, and, and you know, right. he talked about the need you know, to, to take care of uh, these uh, these veterans. He he says that he believes, you know, there were problems there with uh, this shooter and um, that they, they they have to do a better job, really, of, uh, of, of, of finding this out and seeing the warning signs. Yeah, I would tell well, you one thing that I would well, say. Scott, let's Scott go. Let's Scott go, uh, John. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, John. Uh, I would agree with that 100 percent. And I'm not justifying. I want to be very clear from my perspective. I'm not just in, uh, justifying any act of violence by anybody against anybody I know. Oh, or, of course or, not. You know, yeah. I, what I'm saying is that that I really believe that there's a group of people out there that need help, and I don't think the VA is properly run or funded or getting to the matters that they need to do to help these guys, and I'm really concerned about it. And I think that we as a nation not only have the ability, but we have the responsibility to help the people that have been fighting for us for the last 10 years for this nation. And, you know, we've got to deal with things here that we've never had to deal with before. We have new ground we're breaking here. I'm not saying we haven't had soldiers returning from war before, because we have, but I do not believe we've had soldiers that have been repeatedly exposed to the battlefield conditions that we have now and that are returning home from, from that and really not getting that recognition and help. John? No, I couldn't have said it better myself. And this is a time when, as Scott certainly knows better than most, major cuts are going to be made within the Pentagon and in the current armed forces. Uh, could they not find it somehow possible to provide for those who've already served in the armed forces and give them something they very much need at this point? Now, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, you know, well, uh, turning the... Uh, go ahead, Scott. No, I said, well said, John. I agree 100%. All right. Uh, very quickly, we have about two minutes left. Uh, this, uh, this stabbing in Pennsylvania today, um, I, I don't know. I, you know, I, I hear CNN I, and I read quotes from school officials who say, the school officials say, you know, thank God it was with a knife and not a gun. Uh, CNN, uh, one of the commentators said it has a different feel to it because it was with a knife, not a gun. Um, certainly the damage could have been worse with a gun. However, 20 people were stabbed, four of them very seriously wounded. Um, you know, it's a school. A 16-year-old did it. Um, again, it comes down to, uh, you know, uh, no guns on a base. And here, no guns in a school. Uh, you're putting up a sign saying, if you're going to try something, try it, Scott. Yeah, well, you know, I, it, once, of, once of, first of all, that's what a tragedy. I mean, I have kids in school, and so I can feel for those parents and those people that sure. are dealing with this situation as we speak. All I can say is, you know, as a society, I really think that we've got some major issues that we're going to have to deal with, and this is one of them. This violence in schools and this situation there, I mean, I know my response would be that, uh, that it, it, it's, it's, it's not good any way you look at it. You know, it's bad. You know, maybe your final option is going to have to use a gun to, t to deal with this assailant. I don't know, but I just, I don't even like to look right. at options when I see such a tragedy. John, I, it's, guys, I'm up against a heartbreak. I thank you both. John Gizzi, we'll speak to you in a couple of hours. And Scott, uh, again, the book is uh, Eyes on Target. Thank you very much. We're coming back with Ron Christie, ladies and gentlemen. Don't miss it.
In 2014, half of your friends, family, and neighbors may lose their jobs, all while you're robbed of 90% of your life savings, investments, and home's value. Controversial economist Robert Wiedemer, who was the only expert to predict the recession, has released a startling video with shocking evidence that the powers that be have tried to ban. But that hasn't stopped 50 million people from getting the truth. Watch it at AFTbook.com. That's AFTbook.com. Meet John and Nancy. They've spent their lives working hard and saving money, knowing that it would pay off in the end. But unfortunately, all that hard work and smart investing has gotten them nowhere. Then one day, John and Nancy picked up a free copy of Powerful Secrets to Achieve Superior Returns. This book revealed 24 little-known investments that put them back on track to a happy and secure retirement. Get your free copy of Powerful Secrets at MyFinancialAge.org. Meet Jim. Like many of us, Jim enjoys a busy life between work, family, and friends. His days zip along, and Jim has the energy to tackle almost anything. But lately, Jim's get up and go has literally taken on a new meaning. Jim's always put focus on a full night's sleep, but it seems like these days, he's up and down to go to the bathroom so many times he can barely wake up in the morning. prostate concerns have him sad, tired, and worried. Activities that were once enjoyable now seem like a chore for Jim. His golf game is at the mercy of his bathroom schedule. Family outings are planned around it, too. Jim even has difficulty going to the bathroom. He's tried so many prostate remedies he can't get them straight, and nothing ever seems to help. Then Jim found out about Prostate Revive, the all-natural dietary supplement specifically formulated for men, targeted towards impedance never combined before including saw palmetto extract, beta cytosterol, pomegranate fruit extract, selenium, and other high-quality nutrients. These targeted and all-natural ingredients promote healthy urinary flow and optimal prostate health. And the best part is, Prostate Revive was developed by a renowned medical doctor. Dr. David Brownstein personally formulated Prostate Revive with one goal in mind, to promote a healthy prostate gland. Thanks to Prostate Revive, Jim's got his life back. He gets a full night's sleep every night, and his friends and his wife can't believe he's the same guy. He has his old energy back, and no one has to wait for him. He doesn't even think about his prostate concerns anymore. Visit MedicSelect.com to take back your nights and improve your quality of life with Prostate Revive. Learn about our risk-free trial offer at ProstateRevive.com forward slash gym. Hi, I'm Mike Reagan. If you think the worst of Obamacare is behind us, Think again. Soon as new rules will affect every business, every insured person, and every Medicare recipient. That's why you need to protect yourself, your family, and your business with the Obamacare Survival Guide. It's easy to read, the fastest way for you to understand this law. The Obamacare Survival Guide gives you the tips, loopholes, and strategies you need to know. If you're insured on Medicare, a business, a medical professional, just about anyone, you need to get the Obamacare Survival Guide. It's the number one New York Times bestseller, and already more than a half a million Americans have gotten their copy. Newsmax says it's the best guide to the new law. The Obamacare Survival Guide is at bookstores everywhere, or get Newsmax's $4.95 special offer and save $15 off the cover price. Just go online now or call us today. Imagine if you had a secret code for making money. A code buried deep within biblical texts. A code that certain investment titans have quietly exploited to mass billions. And what if this code could be used by you today to unlock vast amounts of wealth safely and ethically? Investment expert and former pastor Sean Hyman says there is such a code. He calls it the biblical money code. Sean credits this code for helping him turn his father's $40,000 retirement account into $396,000. And today, you have the chance to tap into this life-changing biblical money code by visiting moneycode50.com. That's moneycode, the number 50.com. At moneycode50.com, you will find a free video that describes how you could use this biblical code in your own life to get out of debt and invest for profit. That's moneycode50.com.
We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Malzberg Show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are back, as you could tell. And joining us now is our friend Ron Christie, columnist for the Daily Beast, uh, and, of course, uh, special assistant to former President George W. Bush. Hello, Ron. Hello, Steve. Always a pleasure, my friend. Always great to talk to you. Okay. Um, you know, this attack on uh, GW and Dick Cheney uh, over the enhanced interrogation uh, practices, which, you know, we had Mark Thiessen on. He wrote a book on all the good it did. Uh, we had Mary Matlin on yesterday. And Mary Matlin, who was an assistant, a counsel to Dick Cheney, said that Dianne Feinstein is beyond dishonest. She is a liar because she knew with the others about all of these things because she was there when Cheney would brief them and she knows that, that all of the interrogation uh, tactics are put together saved lives and led to, uh, to breakthroughs. So what's going on here? Well, I think first and foremost, Steve, this is all about election year politics and it's all about the Democrats trying to find a boogeyman, in this case, uh, President George W. Bush and his Vice President Dick Cheney, uh, in the attempt to scare the electorate uh, in advance of a blowout, which I think is coming in the United States Senate for the Democrats. Look, as Mary Matlin knows, as my friend Mark Thiessen knows, and I know for having uh, been in the White House, intelligence is disseminated from the executive branch, not only to the elected leadership, which is, of course, the speaker and the majority whip and the majority leader and whatnot, but also to the individuals who are on the intelligence committee. Senator Feinstein, for her to come out and to have a cherry-picked report where she didn't interview any director of the CIA, she didn't interview anyone involved with the enhanced uh, inter interrogation techniques, looks like what it is, which is a smear job. And I think it's disgraceful and it's disgusting. Yeah, and, and you're right. It's all, it's all about politics. That and almost everything else they're doing, uh, the Koch brothers and you name it. But, you know, we've been there and done that with this whole debate. And, and uh, unfortunately, the President of the United States not only did away with the CIA interrogation uh, techniques when he took office, uh, but also made them public and, and in an attempt to, uh, you know, to, to shame us in some way. Uh, but again, him saying and, and, and Feinstein saying and, uh, and all of the rest of them saying that this uh, led to nothing flies in the face. I mean, even, even Brennan and even the former head of the, uh, the CIA, they're, they're, they're coming forward and they're saying, no, this, this did. I mean, Brennan can't do much because he's caught between a rock and a hard place with the uh, Obama policy on this. But they've acknowledged that this uh, worked. Well, of course they have because it did work. I mean, the fact of the matter is that uh, these enhanced interrogation techniques not only prevented acts of terror here in the United States, uh, there are indications that we're also able to prevent acts of terror abroad with our allies. The fact of the matter is that the administration can try to whitewash away a very credible threat that still remains in this country and around the world by terrorists who are loath to our way of life, our, our symbols of democracy and freedom, and will do anything to strike at our hearts and strike really at our cultural centers. And so for this administration to sort of bury its head in the sand and pretend these threats don't exist while also excoriating the pre previous administration who did the yeoman's work to make sure another 9-11 attack didn't take place again, I, again, I think is just a disgrace. And of course, Ron, the, 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 the media, uh, the media which uh, tells you there's no scandal with the IRS, there's no scandal with Benghazi, there's no scandal with anything, uh, but at, at first, you know, chance of bringing up Bush and Cheney, once again, making them the boogeyman, as you alluded to, in the, for the forthcoming election, uh, they jump at it. And they'll, they, you know, they will uh, become preoccupied with this and hammer it home for, from the left point of view. Well, of course they will. And again, I, I think that uh, the, the most disgraceful uh, aspect of, of what Senator Feinstein uh, is doing, or I should say her staff is doing, is now they're leaking elements of their report out. And they're trying to gin up, which, of course, the media is all too obedient to do, interest, as you've said, in, in the papers and on the, in the news broadcasts. But what does this do about keeping America safe and making us safer as a nation? Nothing. These folks, again, want to talk about methods and means of how we've gathered intelligence, how we've used intel intelligence, and how we've used our interrogation techniques to, to safeguard the American The Democrats do these sorts of things, Steve. They're going to get a little bit better insight of, how does America 
look for us. How does America try to detect what we're up to? And it leaves us in a more vulnerable position. Yeah, at a time when the president himself said something I don't think he ever should have said, that his biggest fear is a nuclear bomb going off in Manhattan, which doesn't make me feel too secure. Uh, and, and, you know, so the, the, despite the fact that them claiming that the war on terror is over, uh, if that's his biggest fear and that's what he's concerned about, certainly even he knows uh, it's not. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about, um, uh, about the attack. You know, I, I call it not that I call it, but Bush derangement syndrome uh, is alive and well. It may go away for a little bit. There's no cure. And uh, it, obviously it, it comes back, and it's, it's back in full bloom uh, in the case of some. And one, a, a writer named Jonathan Jones, he's with The Guardian, and uh, he wrote a piece, uh, George Bush's painting, George Bush's paintings, this is the art of Forrest Gump. And he just trashed uh, America. Uh, George Bush saying that this is what you might find in one of those ritzy Salvation Army stores uh, for people that would buy and laugh at. Oh, just went nuts. Now, you've seen the artwork up close. I'm going to put on the screen, and I'm going to do a segment on the Gimme Five, which is uh, uh, later in the next hour, where uh, I go in depth and show a lot of the, uh, I think, seven or eight of the uh, portraits that uh, uh, George Bush has done. But here on the screen, we're putting up the Vladimir Putin one side by side with a picture of, uh, of Vladimir Putin. And I've got to tell you, he's got talent. He's got a, a unique style. I can't draw a straight line, and I venture to say that that uh, Jonathan Jones can't either. <laughs> well, I tell you, Steve, I'm right there with you. I can barely read my own signature when I sign <laughs> it on a check. Look, President George W. Bush embodies a, a lot of what we would call grace and dignity and humility. And I think what you've seen in these portraits is that he tried to offer the American people um, his perceptions of many world leaders that he's met up close. There's uh, one of Angela Merkel. There's one of Putin. You mentioned. There's several other world leaders. Yeah, you and got you got Karzai and you got Maliki and you got uh, Singh and uh, yeah, and even as his own dad. Even his own dad, and I, and I think it's really a reflection on how the, the former president saw some of these folks who were close allies. Some of these folks were uh, a little bit on the adversarial side of things. But it also shows you a president who is very comfortable with himself. I mean, I, I am biased, of course. I worked for the former president and the former uh, vice president, Dick Cheney. But having seen President Bush uh, in person a few months ago, he just seems so relaxed, and he seems very secure and serene with where he is, not only in history, but with his presidency. And I think as time goes by, Steve, I think the American people, we've already seen President Bush's approval rating is now higher than President a very difficult time for America in the era of terrorism, and he kept us safe. And I just think that these portraits of world leaders give yet another insight into how this man thinks. Yeah, and I thought he did a pretty good one uh, that he gave to Jay Leno as well, of Jay Leno. That was, uh, that was a very nice uh, portrait as well. All right, I want to play you something. We only have a couple of minutes left. Uh, this is uh, Jeb Bush. Uh, this is uh, cut uh, 16. But the way I look at this, and this is, this is not, you know, I'm going to say this and it'll be on tape and so be it. Uh, the way I look at this is someone who comes to our country because they couldn't come legally, they come to our country because their, their families, you know, a, a, a dad who loved their children was worried that their children didn't have food on the table. And they, you know, wanted to make sure their family was intact. And they crossed the border because they had no other means to work, to be able to provide for their family. Yes, they broke the law, but it's not a felony. It's kind of the, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an act of love. It's an act of commitment to your family. All right, what's that going to do to his presidential chances? Pretty much put a torpedo right in the bow of that boat. Look, I, I have the utmost respect for Governor Bush. I do. He's flat wrong on this issue. We're not merely talking about people coming here out of an act of love. We're also talking about terrorists who come into our country uh, over the border. We're talking about drug smugglers. We're talking about all sorts of really evil criminal activity, Governor Bush. And the fact that you seem to equate uh, people coming over and breaking our rules of entry is some sort of act of compassion and love is one I just strenuously disagree with. Yeah, not to mention you could apply that to people robbing a bank or a grocery store because their kids are hungry. I mean, where, where would you draw the line? Where are you going to draw the line? Yeah. Now, hopefully this doesn't kick, get me kicked off President Bush's <laughs> Christmas card list, Steve. <laughs> I hope <laughs> I mean? not, Ron. I hope not. You, I'll put you on mine if that should happen. Uh, you, you go on mine anyway. Not that I have one. Thank you, Ron Christie, ladies and gentlemen, former advisor to President George W. Bush. Steve Allsberg Show, Newsmax Television.
Abraham Lincoln began the war between the states with a single stated purpose, to preserve the Union. So it surprised everyone when in July of 1862, President Lincoln announced his intentions to issue an Emancipation Proclamation to free the Southern slaves. Lincoln was urged to delay his proclamation until the Union Army could boast a battlefield victory. That opportunity came at the Battle of Antietam, when Union forces drove Lee's army out of Maryland. Five days later, on September 22, 1862, President Lincoln issued the preliminary Emancipation Proclamation, stating slaves in those areas still in rebellion within 100 days will be freed. This action made slavery the focus of the war and ultimately caused France and England to withdraw their support of the South. The following January, Lincoln issued the actual Emancipation Proclamation, stating that all persons held as slaves within the rebel states are and henceforth shall be free. You're watching An American Moment on Newsmax TV. Attention seniors and baby boomers. A new website has been created just for you. MyBenefits811.com At MyBenefits811.com, we reveal a weird trick that could help you add $152,000 to your Social Security payouts. For example, did you know how you file for Social Security can dramatically change the amount of money you collect? One simple step could add up to $1,000 to your monthly payouts. And other strategies we found reveal 33 ways for big savings on your health care. At MyBenefits811.com, you will also discover how you could save up to 50% on your groceries, along with 49 other ways to save as much as $50,000 starting today. Newsmax says MyBenefits811.com is a critical resource for anyone over the age of 50. So go to MyBenefits811.com now to find out how you could add extra money to your Social Security checks. That's MyBenefits811.com. MyBenefits811.com. Is your property a jungle choked with overgrown saplings and brush? Take back your land with a DR field and brush mower. Nothing stops the DR. Thick grass and weeds, out of control brush briars or canes, even three inch thick trees are no match for America's favorite brush mower. Lock it in and rip it up. Clear it out, clean it up, and rediscover the land you've lost. And with optional attachments, the self-propelled DR Field and Brush Mower converts into a finish mower, a snow thrower, a portable chipper, or a grader blade. It's a field and brush cutter and so much more. Call 1-800-515-4403 for a free buyer's guide and DVD. Learn how you can try a DR at home for six months. Savings of up to $400 and free shipping are now in effect. This offer won't last, so call 1-800-515-4403. Online at drfieldbrush.com. What can that be? 52-year-old male complaining of chest pain. Clear. Heart attacks can happen at any time. My name is Dr. Crandall, and as a cardiologist, I tell my patients that they need to be aware of the hidden symptoms of a heart attack. Here's the truth. If you suffer cardiac arrest outside of a hospital, you have just a 7% chance of surviving. That is why I've created the Simple Heart Test to help you determine your own risk of heart disease. Go online today and in just two minutes, you'll discover your risk of suffering a heart attack, how you score in my heart disease risk factor scale, plus the key warning signs your heart is in trouble. Over two million Americans have already taken my Simple Heart Test and I urge you to do so now before it's too late. Take your free online heart test today and discover how to get Dr. Crandall's bestseller, The Simple Heart Cure. Go to www.hearttest411.com today. In 2014, half of your friends, family, and neighbors may lose their jobs, all while you're robbed of 90% of your life savings, investments, and home's value. Controversial economist Robert Wiedemer, who was the only expert to predict the recession, has released a startling video with shocking evidence that the powers that be have tried to ban. But that hasn't stopped 50 million people from getting the truth. Watch it at AFTbook.com. That's AFTbook.com. 
equal payday. And it's nice to have a day, but it's even better to have equal pay. And our job's not finished yet. Equal pay day means that a woman has to work about this far into 2014 to earn what a man earned in 2013. Think about that. A woman's got to work about three more months in order to get what a man got. All right. Good grammar, by the way. Now, I, my grammar is awful, I'll admit that, but he's the president of the United States. Uh, welcome to Give Me Five. That was the president yesterday. Equal pay day. And it turns out, we find out today that not only does the White House pay women 88 cents on the dollar compared to men, but that's worse than the average in Washington, D.C. So the White House is a worse offender than the average offender in Washington, D.C. Yet there he was. And the media... They couldn't get enough of this when it was over. They love them for this. Uh, at least Ruth Marcus does uh, of the Washington Post appearing on MSNBC. Listen. He is basically signing executive order, which will be a big deal for federal contractors. Think about all the federal contracts in the defense and intelligence communities alone. But it's also a big political issue. It's a very big political issue, and it is a winning political issue for President Obama and Democrats, and they know it, which is why they're spending, uh, in addition to the merits of it, why they're spending so much energy and attention on this issue. Women are a majority of the voters. There is a gender gap. to task. They love when I say that in the control room. And uh, here's some of it. Cut 26. Let's start with the White House. The president today will sign a couple of executive orders to advance the cause of equal pay for women. Uh, let's call this a textbook case, Margaret, of do as I say, not as I do. Uh, as the White House says women should be treated equally, uh, Jay Carney, the press secretary, was asked yesterday about this um, statistic. Women at the White House get 88 cents on the dollar compared to and Jay Carney says, well, we're making progress. All right, well, look, do as I say, not as I do. That's the whole life story of Barack Obama uh, and, and his minions. Uh, they don't want you to, they don't want to have to live by, by the laws and the rules that they want you and I to live by. And here's, here's that Jay Carney bite. We have, uh, 
as an institution here, have aggressively addressed this challenge. And uh, obviously, though, at the 88 cents uh, that you cite, that is not 100, but it is better than the national average. It's better than the national average. Uh, I guess the coach would say, is that the best you got? <laughs> yes, it's kind of the best they had. I mean, um, Jay Carney's issue with the way these numbers are sort of aggregated is fine, except for that the problem is that it's the same way the national numbers are aggregated. Right. Exactly. The mitigating circumstances that make up those numbers that Carney is saying, well, you have to take off different things into account. That's the same with the national numbers. But the president makes believe that's not the case. Here's more. He's saying, well, it's apples and oranges, and the statistics are more complicated than they show. You're taking the average, and that includes a lot of women who have lower paid jobs on the sort of bottom. And, you know, if you compare deputy chief of staff to deputy chef, chief of staff, they make the same money. But uh, critics of this sort of 70 cent, 77 cents number say the same thing, which is right. it's more complicated than it seems. So it's something the White House has and, and this is not new, uh, Manu. In 2011, there was a study that said women at the White House made 18 percent less than their male counterparts. He will never be invited to another White House party again, ever. One more from John King. When Barack Obama was in the United States Senate, there was a study that found, and this is across all congressional offices, not just his, but that the man on average made $54,000 a year, the women on average $45,000 a year. So he sort of knows he's sticking his hand in this blender, doesn't that, he? That's right. Clearly not the message they want to send on equal pay day. He's sticking his hand in the blender. Bravo, John King. Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax Television. Hi, Tom Parent here for DR Power Equipment. Is your driveway a bumpy road full of potholes, washboard, and ruts? Well, for lots of folks that live in the country, this is a normal ride. But it doesn't have to be this way. Not when you own a DR Power Grader. Tow the Power Grader behind your riding mower, utility tractor, or ATV. With each pass, the Power Grader loosens, redistributes, and levels surface materials. Potholes and ruts are filled in, washboard is smoothed out, and your resurfaced driveway is ready to roll. Call 1-800-795-0332 for a free buyer's guide and DVD. Learn how you can try a DR at home for six months. And now for a limited time, you can save up to $210 and receive free shipping. This offer won't last, so call 1-800-795-0332. Online at drpowergrader.com. Meet John and Nancy. Like many people, John and Nancy have spent their whole lives working hard, saving their money and investing wisely, knowing that it would pay off in the end. But the reality is, today's world is not the same as it was. John and Nancy's stocks have taken them on a serious roller coaster ride, and it's all but destroyed their retirement funds. Their house is not even close to being worth what they paid, and to boot, their middle-class paychecks no longer cover their costs. All that hard work and smart investing has gotten them nowhere. In fact, they are no longer thinking about when they will retire, they're wondering if they'll retire. Then one day, John and Nancy heard about a man named Tom Hutchison, a veteran of Wall Street for over two decades. Tom noticed that the wealthy invested differently than normal people, and their methods seemed to be a secret they didn't want to share. So Tom left his job, compiled the strategies, and published them in the controversial book, Powerful Secrets to Achieve Superior Returns. John and Nancy immediately picked up a copy, began investing, and never looked back. Thanks to Powerful Secrets, John and Nancy now have investments that pay up to 20% a year, they learned about unique tax-advantaged investments, and their favorite chapter revealed a strategy that anyone can use to turn $50,000 into $1 million. Now, John and Nancy have control of their financial future in this new reality, and they have peace of mind about their investments that they never had before. Best of all, they are back on track to a secure retirement. To get your free copy of the book, Powerful Secrets to Achieve Superior Returns, simply visit www.myfinancialage.org. 
3 a.m. and you're up again for the third time. It's not just affecting your sleep, it's interrupting your daily life. Frequent trips to the bathroom due to an aging prostate is a common concern, but you can now do something about it with Prostate Revive. Doctor Formulated Prostate Revive is an all-natural dietary supplement packed with 15 powerful ingredients focused on improving prostate health by targeting the two main sources of prostate concerns, rogue testosterone and inflammation. And now, in this limited time offer, you can try Prostate Revive absolutely free. That's a free bottle, a 30-day supply of Prostate Revive, risk-free. Plus, if you call right now, you'll also receive our free report, A Doctor's Guide to a Healthy Prostate. Call now for details on getting your free bottle, plus our doctor's report. Call 1-800-659-REVIVE. That's 1-800-659-REVIVE. Don't be a victim of an aging prostate. Start getting the sleep you need and get your life back with Prostate Revive. Claim your risk-free bottle now at 1-800-659-REVIVE. Hi, I'm Mike Reagan. If you think the worst of Obamacare is behind us, think again. Soon as new rules will affect every business, every insured person, and every Medicare recipient. That's why you need to protect yourself, your family, and your business with the Obamacare Survival Guide. It's easy to read, the fastest way for you to understand this law. The Obamacare Survival Guide gives you the tips, loopholes, and strategies you need to know. If you're insured on Medicare, a business, a medical professional, just about anyone, you need to get the Obamacare Survival Guide. It's a number one New York Times bestseller, and already more than a half a million Americans have gotten their copy. Newsmax says it's the best guide to the new law. The Obamacare Survival Guide is at bookstores everywhere, or get Newsmax's $4.95 special offer and save $15 off the cover price. Just go online now or call us today. Hi, it's Steve Malzberg coming up on this hour, the big Steve Malzberg Show. We're going to have the uh, politics writer for Slate.com. He'll be here. We'll be discussing the Mozilla CEO controversy. He's pro-gay marriage, but against what Mozilla has done. Republican Congressman from Tennessee, Trey Gowdy, will be here, member of the House Oversight Committee. We'll talk Lois Lerner and more. Then our friend Charles Hurt, great columnist from the Washington Times, uh, he has a little, uh, little column about Al Sharpton. You might have heard of him. And it's called Once a, Just a Race Hustler, Now a Snitching Race Hustler. Got to love it. That, give me five and more this hour. Steve Malzberg Show on Newsmax Television. Five, four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studios, this is the Steve Malzberg Show. Be a part of the action by calling toll-free. 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. Or email Steve at Show at Newsmax.com. Here is Steve Malsberg. All right, folks. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, I, I alluded to it uh, earlier. Uh, the uh, aunt of uh, Barack Obama uh, who uh, he refers to uh, in his book and has been referred to as Auntie Zatuni, um, has died. Uh, she died uh, yesterday, apparently, at the age of 61. Um, her name was uh, um, uh, Aunt Zatuni, I, well, Aunt wasn't her name, but it was Zatuni Ayango. She was denied asylum in the United States but stayed illegally here for years. Uh, she lived in a housing project in squalor in Massachusetts. Uh, but remember, Obama says we're our brothers and sisters keeper, except for him. He praised her in his book, uh, yet he really had nothing to do with her. As a matter of fact, uh, she gave an interview um, a couple of years ago and praised, get this, she had words of praise for President George W. Bush for not having her immediately deported when her story came to light, quote, he's my number one guy. President George W. Bush is her num was her number one guy. Now, we spoke to Mark Obama, uh, Barack Obama's half-brother, about uh, Obama and his family and, and why he doesn't take care of them, the extended family. Here's what he said. We don't just... 
once. I've heard it 70 million times from uh, Barack Obama. We are our brother's keeper. We are our sister's keeper. Um, why doesn't he help his family? Well, let's let's put that in context. I would step back and say, you know, the assumption that he doesn't help his family is probably, you know, maybe a little bit. Well, why doesn't he help? I mean, uh, why didn't he help know, Auntie Zatuni for, and uh, and the others who were living? She was living in a housing project in in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Let me, let, me, let me share with you something, Steve. You know, during the inauguration, the first inauguration, Barack actually flew almost all of the members of the extended Obama family to the inauguration at his own expense. And, uh, and it was probably one of the most wonderful, wonderful moments that we had to get together after all of the bitterness. Because, you know, we're like herding cats, the Obama family. It's like putting cats in the same room and trying to move them in the same direction. It's very difficult. But he was able, you know, we had a wonderful time. Now, that said, I cannot speak for Zaytuni, and I cannot speak for, you know, Uncle Omar. I can only speak for myself, and my book tries to do that. Now, one thing I have found out is that Barack has, in a sense, you know, there was a, an interview with CNN where he said basically he met me for the first time just two years ago. Right, that was not true. Yeah, that floored me because, um, you know, the first time we met was actually 1988, and uh, we'd actually met – before between them. All right, so how, what do you attribute that to, for instance? I don't want to interrupt your storyline, but what, what do you attribute sure. a, a, a crazy, being generous well, misstatement like that? How could he not remember that he met you prior? Well, yeah, I mean, and, it was it was very it was very disappointing, and I'm still waiting to hear um, an explanation for it. All right, and, and Mark, Ob Mark Obama went on to say that uh, Barack Obama has run away from his Kenyan roots, from any members of his family that's related to Kenya, for political reasons and political expediency. And that's a shame. That's a shame. When you have an, an aunt who's living in squalor in, in a housing project and you do nothing. All right, folks, we're going to talk about the Mozilla CEO. Let's watch this, uh, this video. We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Malzberg Show. This is a guy who, as the head of the Firefox browser, conceivably would meet Apple CEO Tim Cook. Tim Cook being the head of the most important tech company on the planet, probably. Um, these two guys are in a room. One of them believes he has more rights than the other and that the other guy has fewer human rights than he does. How is Tim Cook supposed to react to that? How is he supposed to deal with that? How, it's crazy. Well, how exactly, how uh, exactly an analogy is, would be, be you know, if, if this guy had donated some money to the KKK yeah. and was then meeting with a company run by a black CEO. It's just, it's, it's beyond the pale. Once you are for, donating for you, money to organizations that strip opposite, people you, of their civil rights, you have stepped sure. beyond the pale. All right, folks, uh, there you have it. I, I don't know who the poor guy trying to get a word in edgewise was, but uh, that was Jim Edwards, the deputy editor of uh, Business Insider website, comparing comparing someone who supported Proposition 8, a, a, a proposition which passed in the state of California, to the KKK. You know, yesterday, Hank Aaron told USA Today that uh, Republicans are the KKK. They just have shirt and ties. I guess, it, you know, you throw around that KKK analogy and it diminishes what the KKK was, how horrific they were, and what they really stood for, just like when you say Trayvon Martin is Emmett Till. Um, but that's commonplace these days. Joining us now to hopefully add a little uh, sanity to the insanity of it all, is William uh, Salatin. He happens to be the politics writer at Slate.com. Hello, William. Hey, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. All right, so you wrote a, a, a column uh, that the title of it uh, was Purge the Bigots. Uh, Brendan Eich is just the beginning. Let's oust everyone who donated to the campaign against gay marriage. I'm assuming your tongue was firmly planted in your cheek. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> and I wrote it because I was quite alarmed by some of the rhetoric coming out uh, from people who, like me, support same-sex marriage, except I felt that they were carrying things a little bit too far, as, uh, as your case illustrated, where uh, people were uh, comparing this to, uh, you know, uh, segregation uh, and were calling for people to lose their jobs over having supported uh, a referendum about same-sex marriage. And I just think it's time for everybody to catch their breath, relax, and sort out some of these issues because it's a much more complicated no it, 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 it we lost you after you said much more complicated but it is it is much more complicated than meets the eye but uh you know I, i'm i'm glad that you are a gay marriage supporter uh, or i am not 
I believe marriage is between a man and a woman, but I'm glad people like us could come together and, 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 and agree, like Andrew Sullivan agrees, uh, that this is just outrageous. This is a, I mean, this is a, 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 a witch hunt. This that takes you back to the uh, communist hearings back in the 50s. Uh, but, but even worse, because, you know, if, if you were a communist back in the 50s, if you were, uh, then, you know, you should have been uh, dealt with. But here, people have a right to believe on religious grounds or any grounds they want to uh, that, get, that marriage should be between a man and a woman. Uh, uh, the President of the United States believed that until a couple of years ago. So uh, to, to, to look for people to, to suffer because of those beliefs is, is just un-American. Yeah, I mean, there are basic, look, there are two different questions at stake here. One is, do you support or oppose same-sex marriage? And you and I can have a conversation or a debate about that. The other question is, should we have a conversation or debate, or should I tell you or you tell me to shut up? And I think we're all better off if we continue the conversation, and if instead of telling me to shut up or trying to cost you your job, I try to persuade you that I'm right. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the way to do it. Now, in your piece, you know, you talk about the fact that the list um, of, of people, uh, the 35,000 people uh, or more that gave money to the campaign for Prop, uh, uh, Prop 8 in 2008, uh, you could get most of those names on the list. So you're tongue-in-cheek uh, arguing to, to go after the rest of them. But I'm sure they've checked that list, and I'm sure they're looking to see who they could in their minds legitimately go after and, 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 you know, and, and have them lose their job or make an example of. So I'm sure your, your, uh, your push, uh, tongue-in-cheek push, is not far-fetched at all. Yeah, no, there are certainly people who, I mean, look, going after Brendan Eich in the first place was, uh, I, I think it was kind of thoughtless. People just thought, well, look, this is a guy who's, who's part of our community, our liberal Bay Area community, and we can, we can target him. And I don't think they thought through the criteria that they were using. And one reason why I went to the voter list, the, the donor list, is to point out, look, there are 35,000 people you're going to have to go after if you're going to apply this standard. They don't just work for Mozilla. They work for The Gap. They work for Google. They work for Apple. You know, are you going to go through all these companies and toss out all these employees? What about the 7 million people who voted for this? So it just sort of drives home. It's a reality check that you're not talking about a fringe. You're talking about a large portion of the American public. No, a absolutely. Uh, but, William, um, I, I, I don't think, I mean, if they could go after the 7 million, they would. And if, they, if there is another high-profile CEO-type person that they could find, I'm sure we're going to hear about it very, very soon. Uh, and, and here's a question that needs to be addressed. Um, I, I think if you took a poll or, 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 and asked the American public, do you favor this kind of you know, witch hunt or whatever you want to call it, retribution, um, and, and I'm sure 70 percent of Americans would say no. But, uh, and I'm sure if you asked, uh, was Mozilla right or wrong, most Americans would say they were wrong. Yet, the fact of the matter is, Mozilla felt the pressure. And they feel the pressure because there are full-time people who do this. They write letters, they launch a campaign, emails, etc. They say they have numbers beyond their numbers. And the American public, they're not organized, and they, you know, maybe they're reading the story, but they have no time to, 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 to say, uh, call up Mozilla on their own and say, I'm pulling it. And they, it, but, but if it were that way, if the, if the silent majority, if you will, could speak and talk to Mozilla and react, Mozilla would reverse. Well, it's not entirely clear to me that Mozilla would reverse, because you have to remember Mozilla's community is people who are fairly liberal, progressive, pro-gay rights. But what, what would happen, I want to ask people on the left, what would happen if we applied this rule everywhere, if we allowed pressure campaigns to drive out CEOs? What would happen at a company like Hobby Lobby? There are lots of companies in this country that have a fundamentally conservative audience, conservative constituency, conservative customer base. If they wanted to apply their community standards, all the gay CEOs, all the gay executives would be out of a job. Well, that would be against the law uh, in some states. I don't think there's any law protecting um, a, a, a guy like uh, Ike who, and, and I just thought of this, I hadn't brought this up, and I've had many conversations about this in the recent days on this show, but, I, you know, if you, in some places, if you fire somebody because they're gay or whatever, you could, I guess that person could sue. But can a straight person who supports traditional marriage who's ousted, can they sue? They're not a protected class. 
Well, there's a lot of debate about what, who gets into a, a protected class. It's really interesting if you read the statement from the chairwoman of Mozilla after... Oh, Benjamin my God, after, yeah. They're full of tolerance, right? <laughs> well, but it's a confused tolerance. Right. Because as we support employees of, and she has the long list, race, sex, uh, she has sexual orientation on the list. She also has religious freedom, religious views on the list. How are you going to reconcile it when one person's religious view is that they don't accept another person's idea of marriage in relation to sexual orientation? No, very good, very good questions. And all these questions are, are, should be debated. Let me ask you, when, um, when uh, Bill Maher, who I usually have no use for, and, uh, and I usually quote in a negative light, and I'm just uh, asking you your opinion on what he said, uh, he, talking about this topic on his show on Friday, said that uh, he believes there's a gay mafia and that if you cross them, you will be whacked, uh, you know, figuratively speaking. And in this case, whack means you lose your job. Yeah, I don't believe that there's a gay mafia. What I believe is that there is a universal human nature to gang up in mobs and go, when you think you have power, when you think you have public opinion on your side or economic leverage, there's a tendency to use that leverage. And I think that's what's happening now. It can just as easily be used. It has been used by the right against the left. And I'm for, I'm with Andrew Sullivan, I'm for a tolerant society in which we minimize that kind of behavior. And you better not use it when you have the power, because sometimes the other side will have the power against you. Yeah. Hey, William, a fascinating conversation. Thank you very much. People go read him at uh, Slate.com. That's uh, William uh, uh, Salatin. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right. My pleasure. All right. It, it, it's, uh, it, it's heartening to hear people who are pro-gay marriage. Um, I, I have no idea you know, why he's pro-gay marriage. That this is his business. I don't know if he's gay, not gay. I don't really care. But it's good to hear people who are pro-gay marriage, uh, like Andrew Sullivan and now like, like William uh, Salatin, say, uh, you know, hey, this is outrageous. You know, what are we going to do next? And make them walk in public and flog them and, and, and put them in jail and put them on an island somewhere? I mean, this is, this is the, the reverse discrimination. But in many in society on the left, apparently they're pretty happy with this reverse discrimination. They really don't care. Really don't care. All right, when we come back, folks, Trey Gowdy, a Republican from Tennessee, member of the House Oversight Committee. We're going to talk about uh, Lois Lerner, Steve Mulsberg Show, Newsmax Television. Tonight we are a country awakened to danger and called to defend freedom. <laughs> Once you cut a tree down, what do you do about the stump? Grind it down with a new DR Stump Grinder, the fast, easy, and affordable solution for stump removal. Thanks to the power of a world-class engine and carbide-tipped cutting teeth, the DR Stump Grinder tackles any size stump. With each pass, these teeth quickly shave the stump down, taking a remarkable 400 bites per second. In no time, the stump is completely gone. All that's left behind is a pile of wood chips. Get behind the power of a DR Stump Grinder to rid your property of tree stumps forever. Call 1-800-799-1157 for a free buyer's guide and DVD. Learn how you can try a DR Stump Grinder at home for six months. Savings of up to $400 and free shipping are now in effect. This offer won't last, so call 1-800-799-1157. Online at drstumpgrinder.com. Federal and state authorities urge every American family to have an emergency radio. It can save you and your loved ones from disaster. Now, Newsmax has an incredible offer for you. Get our weather band emergency radio free. This emergency radio picks up AM, FM, and the NOAA weather band. It even works without batteries. Essential in an emergency. Call the number below right now and you'll get this emergency radio plus two great publications, including the award-winning Newsmax magazine. Each month, Newsmax brings you the important stories you won't see anywhere else. Plus, you'll get incisive commentary from David Limbaugh, George Will, Michael Reagan, Ben Stein, Dr. Laura, and more. Ben Stein says Newsmax reveals the unafraid, uncomplicated, bare-knuckles truth about today's dangerous world. Mike Reagan says, I guarantee that you'll love Newsmax magazine. This emergency radio offer with Newsmax magazine won't last long. Order online or call the number on your screen right now. What can that be? 
52-year-old male complaining of chest pain. Clear. If you suffer cardiac arrest outside of a hospital, you have just a 7% chance of survival. Hi, my name is Dr. Crandall. As a cardiologist, I've dedicated the last 30 years to helping my patients win the fight against heart disease. That's why I wrote the Simple Heart Cure, to show you how easy it is to identify early warning signs, make simple heart healthy changes, and reverse heart disease in just 90 days. You'll discover how to reduce your risk of heart attack by 61% lower your bad cholesterol, unclog your arteries naturally, safely lower your blood pressure, and so much more. This easy to read book shows you how to make simple changes to protect your heart. Dr. Crandall's best-selling book is available at bookstores everywhere or go online to heartcure211.com and get your copy for just $4.95. Hi, I'm Mike Reagan. If you're a senior or baby boomer, you may be missing out on some important information. Tens of millions of boomers are set to retire, yet many don't know that how you file your Social Security can dramatically change the amount of money you collect. That's why Newsmax created a special report offering you the best strategies to maximize your Social Security benefits. For example, this report reveals a weird trick that could help you add up to $152,000 to your Social Security payouts. It also shows how some qualifying recipients can add up to $1,000 to their monthly payments. To get your copy with our free offer, along with seven additional money-making booklets, simply go online. Newsmax says this report is a critical resource for anyone over the age of 50. So go to our website today and find out if you qualify to add extra money to your Social Security. Remember, it's your money. You deserve the most back in your retirement. What you don't know about Pope Francis will shock you. Bestseller, Francis, a Pope for Our Time, tells the real story. Newsmax says, Francis, a Pope for Our Time, rips off the shroud of mystery about this man. Now Newsmax has a special offer for Francis, a Pope for Our Time. Get it for just $9.95 and save $12 off the cover price. Plus, we'll send you a free one-year subscription to Newsmax magazine. That's a $40 value for free. Order now at popesagenda.com. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studios, this is the Steve Malzberg Show. Be a part of the action by calling toll-free 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. Or email Steve at malzbergshow at newsmax.com. Here is Steve Malzberg. I have done nothing wrong. I have broken no laws. I have provided no false information to Congress. I have violated no IRS rules. I have violated no IRS regulations. And then, Mr. Chairman, she authenticated a document. All of this, Mr. Chairman, after she invoked her right to remain silent. Nine separate factual assertions. All right. That, of course, uh, is Congressman Trey Gowdy, Republican from Tennessee and uh, you should all be very familiar with that because then, Congressman, welcome to the show. Uh, great to talk to you again. And, of course, you were the one who, who, who came up with that, uh, that uh, revelation, if you will, that, you know, Lois Lerner really has no right to, to, to continue to plead the fifth since she gave up that right in your view and in the view of uh, other legal uh, uh, minds. Uh, she, she, she forfeited that right. Yeah, even a blind hog fi finds an acorn every now and again. <laughs> uh, uh, but I still can't count. I went back uh, a couple weeks later, and she actually made 18 separate factual assertions. So uh, per normal, I was off by about 50 percent. Yeah, there's no way you can argue that she exercised her right to remain silent when she talked for 20 minutes. Yeah, well, And I even Alan Dershowitz, who, by the way, I bumped into at a, at a dinner, and, uh, and he said I was right, which made me – of course, reconsider my position. But nonetheless, uh, it's not a partisan issue when it comes to the law. You either waived or you didn't, and she waived. Yeah, she did waive. Well, the, the, today, of course, the House Ways and Means Committee uh, voted to refer uh, to the Justice Department uh, Lois Lerner for criminal action. Uh, we had uh, Congressman um, uh, Tim Griffin on earlier who said that there is substantial evidence that Lois Lerner is guilty of criminal activity. 
Um, and tomorrow, I believe your committee, the uh, House Oversight Committee, uh, in a separate action, will uh, recommend uh, and take a vote, I should say, uh, to hold Lois Lerner in contempt. So where are we, in your view, and what's going to happen uh, as we go forward? You know, I think what happened today was really big, and it was big for two reasons. By the way, Tim Griffin's a former U.S. attorney in Arkansas, yep. so he knows what he's talking about. Y you remember when the president said there's not a smidgen of criminality? Yeah, sure, to, to, uh, to a Bill O'Reilly, yeah. Right. So now you have the Ways and Means, which is one of the more widely respected committees in Congress, sending three separate potential criminal acts to the Department of Justice and a referral. The second issue I think that's important is this is validation of sorts for Daryl Issa because he's pilloried as, as this is just a political exercise and there's nothing there and you need to move on. Well, here's another committee of Congress totally separate from oversight, which not only has concluded mismanagement and misconduct, but potential criminality. It's a big deal. Yeah, no, it is. It is a very big deal. Unfortunately, uh, for the country, um, you know, Eric Holder is uh, the uh, attorney general, and we've seen how he's operated in the past. We've seen him be contentious with uh, um, our friend here on the show, uh, Louis Gohmert, I'm sure a friend of yours, colleague of yours, yes, uh, and others, uh, to, you know, in the, during the, uh, the, the recent times he's appeared before Congress, and he's shown no impetus whatsoever to, uh, to take this seriously, has he? Uh, no, and and you know I, I mentioned to him yesterday because he he was asked uh, Jimmy Jordan asked him a question about this investigation and he said he couldn't comment on it, which actually is the right answer. If you are a federal prosecutor, you can't comment on a pending investigation, but that didn't keep the president from doing so. Uh, remember, he he was all more than happy to comment yep. and say that there was no criminality. Yep. So. If Eric Holder, there was another exchange between he and Louis Gomert. You know, Louis said, you know, it doesn't bother you that you were held in contempt. And Holder showed as much animation as I've ever seen him show. And he said, don't ever assume that. Don't, don't ever assume. I think it was wrong. I think it was unjust, unjust. But don't ever assume it didn't bother me. Well, this is a perfect opportunity for him to prove his law enforcement credentials and not his political credentials. He's got career prosecutors in that office that are neither Republican nor Democrat. You've got a committee of Congress called Ways and Means that sent three separate potential criminal violations. If you want to be taken seriously as a top law enforcement official in the country, you better handle this investigation in a way that generates public confidence. Now, yeah, no, I, I am so with you, but, uh, you know, they were, what Gohmert and, uh, and Holder were talking about yesterday was, uh, the, 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 yes, being held in contempt, but also uh, then uh, Gohmert said, don't lecture me because uh, Holder claiming they already handed over, you know, everything that they needed on the, uh, the uh, Fast and Furious case. And, and, and Gohmert said, you know, 200 Mexicans died and a federal agent died and uh, others uh, were injured and died. And, and you know, we, we don't have what we need. So, I mean, this t appears to be an attorney general and an administrator administration that claims there are no scandals, uh, that claims there's no breaking of the law, there's no, like you said, not a smidgen in, uh, with regard to the IRS. Benghazi has been settled. That's all over, they say. So, I mean, I, I'm just not optimistic that you're going to get any cooperation from Eric Holder going forward. Here's what you and I are both optimistic about. Uh, November. November is the ultimate chance for our fellow citizens to say, you know what? We're not headed in the right direction, and you can pick your reason why. Our feckless foreign policy, health care, or maybe just maybe, since we're a nation of laws, it'd be nice to have a chief executive and an AG that took that responsibility seriously. Now, you can't get rid of the chief executive this November, but you can certainly send a message that we're not happy with the way things are going. I know... Look, my, my wife hates it when I say elections have consequences. Uh, which why, is, why does she hate that? Well, because she's heard it 100 million <laughs> times. And I think at a certain point after 25 years of marriage, <laughs> you just assume I've got that down. Right. But, but I want to play for the folks you getting a standing ovation uh, talking about exactly what you're talking about. Here's, here's uh, cut 51. Everybody watch. Mr. Speaker, the House of Representatives does not exist to pass suggestions. We do not exist to pass ideas. We make law, and while you are free to stand and clap when any president 
comes into this hallowed chamber and promises to do it with or without you, I will never stand and clap when any president, no matter whether he's your party or mine, promises to make us a constitutional anomaly and an afterthought. We make law. I got to tell you, that is, that is so right on target. And, and you know, you'd like to think, because you know it, Congressman, your wife knows it, I know it, uh, our, our viewers know it, that the, the president's running roughshod over the Constitution. But I just hope that the American people understand that as well. Well, if we get to the point where the end justifies the means, and, and so long as I agree with your policy, the manner in which you got there is irrelevant to me, then we really are finished. I, I mean, we, we just are. That is not apocalyptic. We really are finished. If it doesn't matter whether you would enforce mandatory minimums, which I discussed with the Attorney General yesterday, or the health care law, I mean, you know, people are talking about immigration. Some people think the immigration system needs to be reformed. What confidence do you have that any executive right. would enforce what's passed? Right. So it, it's serious, and I hope it's serious enough that people will put down – their Republican and Democrat credentials and pick up their American credentials and say, you know what, to whoever our president is, you don't like the law, advocate to change it, but we expect you to enforce it. Absolutely. Congressman Trey Gowdy, a pleasure to talk to you, sir. I can't wait till the next time and keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Congressman Trey Gowdy, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Steve Malsberg Show. Um, he's He's something special. He really is. I mean, you know, we've seen him come and we've seen him go. We've talked to a lot of people and you know, we've seen them in action on their committees and uh, on the floor of the House and Senate. Uh, but uh, he knows what he's talking about. He absolutely knows the law. He knows what he's talking about. And he is so right on uh, Lois Lerner and the fact that she gave up her right to claim and, and invoke the Fifth Amendment once she started you know, going on and on and on, denying this, denying that, talking about that. 18 points, he now says. 18 or 19. Uh, I can't count either. I can't remember what he said. Um, anyway, when we come back, our friend Charles Hurt will be here. Remember a guy named Sharpton? Sharpton? Oh, yeah. We'll talk about him. Steve Malzberg Show. We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Malzberg Show. In 2014, half of your friends, family, and neighbors may lose their jobs, all while you're robbed of 90% of your life savings, investments, and home's value. Controversial economist Robert Wiedemer, who was the only expert to predict the recession, has released a startling video with shocking evidence that the powers that be have tried to ban. But that hasn't stopped 50 million people from getting the truth. Watch it at AFTBook.com. That's AFTBook.com. Meet John and Nancy. They've spent their lives working hard and saving money, knowing that it would pay off in the end. But unfortunately, all that hard work and smart investing has gotten them nowhere. Then one day, John and Nancy picked up a free copy of Powerful Secrets to Achieve Superior Returns. This book revealed 24 little-known investments that put them back on track to a happy and secure retirement. Get your free copy of Powerful Secrets at MyFinancialAge.org. Meet Jim. Like many of us, Jim enjoys a busy life. Between work, family, and friends, his days zip along. And Jim has the energy to tackle almost anything. But lately, Jim's get up and go has literally taken on a new meaning. Jim's always put focus on a full night's sleep, but it seems like these days, he's up and down to go to the bathroom so many times he can barely wake up in the morning. His prostate concerns have him sad, tired, and worried. Activities that were once enjoyable now seem like a chore for Jim. His golf game is at the mercy of his bathroom schedule. Family outings are planned around it, too. Jim even has difficulty going to the bathroom. He's tried so many prostate remedies he can't keep them straight. And nothing ever seems to help. Then Jim found out about Prostate Revive, the all-natural dietary supplement specifically formulated for men, targeted towards improving and sustaining normal prostate function. Prostate Revive includes 15 super ingredients never combined before, including salt palmetto extract, beta cytosterol, 
pomegranate fruit extract, selenium, and other high quality nutrients. These targeted and all natural ingredients promote healthy urinary flow and optimal prostate health. And the best part is, Prostate Revive was developed by a renowned medical doctor. Dr. David Brownstein personally formulated Prostate Revive with one goal in mind, to promote a healthy prostate gland. Thanks to Prostate Revive, Jim's got his life back. He gets a full night's sleep every night, and his friends and his wife can't believe he's the same guy. He has his old energy back, and no one has to wait for him. He doesn't even think about his prostate concerns anymore. Visit MedicSelect.com to take back your nights and improve your quality of life with Prostate Revive. Learn about our risk-free trial offer at ProstateRevive.com forward slash Jim. Hi, I'm Mike Reagan. If you think the worst of Obamacare is behind us, think again. Soon as new rules will affect every business, every insured person, and every Medicare recipient. That's why you need to protect yourself, your family, and your business with the Obamacare Survival Guide. It's easy to read, the fastest way for you to understand this law. The Obamacare Survival Guide gives you the tips, loopholes, and strategies you need to know. If you're insured, on Medicare, a business, a medical professional, just about anyone, you need to get the Obamacare Survival Guide. It's the number one New York Times bestseller, and already more than a half a million Americans have gotten their copy. Newsmax says it's the best guide to the new law. The Obamacare Survival Guide is at bookstores everywhere or get Newsmax's $4.95 special offer and save $15 off the cover price. Just go online now or call us today. Imagine if you had a secret code for making money, a code buried deep within biblical texts. A code that certain investment titans have quietly exploited to mass billions. And what if this code could be used by you today? to unlock vast amounts of wealth safely and ethically. Investment expert and former pastor, Sean Hyman, says there is such a code. He calls it the Biblical Money Code. Sean credits this code for helping him turn his father's $40,000 retirement account into $396,000. And today, you have the chance to tap into this life-changing Biblical Money Code by visiting moneycode50.com. That's moneycode, the number 50.com. At moneycode50.com, you will find a free video that describes how you could use this biblical code in your own life to get out of debt and invest for profits. That's moneycode50.com. Get off the sidelines and be a part of the show. Call Steve toll-free at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. Here is Steve Malsberg. It said that if I didn't stop interfering, they would kill me. I contacted the FBI, even though I'd had recent run-ins with them in a separate boxing investigation. My call led to my cooperating with the FBI against those mob guys, or who they say they were, to try to protect myself and others. That's the story, and it's not a new story. I wrote about it in my book, Go and Tell Pharaoh, back in 1996, and it's been reported in the press before. I did the right thing working with authorities. I didn't consider myself, quote, an informant, wasn't told I was that. I was an American citizen with every right to call law enforcement, and that's the lesson I want to emphasize tonight. All right, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, Al Sharpton. <laughs> Uh, trying to explain his way out of this one on his show on MSNBC last night, um, where it's been revealed now, of course, that um, he was an FBI snitch. At least that's what the uh, smoking gun or snoops, what was it? Uh, anyway, joining us now uh, is a man who's written a brilliant column on it today at the Washington Times, and that's our friend Charles Hurd. Hey, Charles. Hey, Steve. So let's get this straight. Um, a low-down, double-crossing, lying snitch from the start, and you finish by saying to him, uh, now we come to find out you were in cahoots with Whitey all along, so no longer are you just a low-down, two-bit huckster. You're a lying, cheating, double-crossing, low-down, two-bit huckster. I love it. It's just amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. And, and you've got to and, – and, and, and you almost have to admire the, 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 the guts, the, the gutsiness that, that, and shamelessness that it must take for him to go out there and not see a thing in the world – wrong 
along with any of this. He he didn't consider himself a confidential informant. Well, the FBI thought he was a, thought of him as a con- confidential informant, and not only that, they paid him for the information that he gave them. And and I, I'm, did, did I, is he telling us he didn't cash those checks or he didn't accept <laughs> that money? Is, is, is that what he means when he says that he didn't consider himself a confidential informant? Well, he had a, he had a, a number CI. What was it? Seven. CI seven, which will go down. As, as being even worse than client number nine. Number nine client for Spitzer. <laughs> but what will this do uh, to him? I mean, he's not going to lose his job for it. He's not going to lose his front row seat at the dinner table with Michelle and, uh, and Barack. Um, you know, he's not going to lose his street cred at the uh, uh, National Action Network when Obama comes and speaks there next week. So, I mean, you know, what will the repercussions be, do you think? I don't know, though. I mean, do you really think he doesn't lose... Uh, I'm talking about real street cred, right? Right. Not not not, not this manufactured street cred that he gets from uh, people like the executives at MSNBC, right. who for some reason give him a show and allow him to really embarrass himself uh, on a nightly basis, where he's struggling to read through the teleprompter, like he's like he's just learning how to read, and 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 what, what I mean, I I, I just wonder why that is not viewed by blacks as being actually kind of racist. How, how is it that you give a guy like this a show like that when he, he, he clearly is not, I mean, he's, he's, not, he's not a fair representation of black people. I, I, and, but I, I honestly think that that's what, you know, the way MSNBC rolls is they're just like, well, you know, yes, he, you know, yes, he can't read the teleprompter, but isn't that just how black people uh, read? You know, why are they not called out for being racists for this stuff? Yeah, I mean, because he's unqualified. I mean, he's, he's, he's just unqualified. Totally unqualified. And, and, and not only that, but, but a total huckster who has shaken people down, who has destroyed lives. And, and I mean, I, I, I believe in being as suspicious of the cops as, as the next guy. But, but, but he has gone to the, to, so far as to, to help uh, uh, create a, a, a lie, a hoax that destroyed the lives of several police officers we're, we're, well after they knew that Tawana Brawley was right. lying. You're talking and, about and Tawana Brawley, and of course, uh, that for those who don't know, that was a whole big thing in New York where this girl, a black girl in Westchester, uh, they found her supposedly in a plastic bag with feces in it, her, and, and she claimed she was raped by uh, the, the, really the, 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 the police hierarchy and, and law enforcement hierarchy of, I believe, of Westchester County. One man committed suicide. Uh, uh, Sharpton was found to, uh, Stephen Pagonis sued him for defamation, and uh, he, it, it took him a long time to pay Stephen Pagonis, I believe, and I don't even know where that stands. But, yeah, lives yeah, were ruined. I, and, and has he even actually paid the entire amount? Or maybe it's Tawana Brawley who is not. Well, there paid. was something with Sharpton. Yeah, Tawanda Brawley hasn't paid. Sharpton, may, I think, paid actually, but eventually. But yeah. but that but a grand jury uh, a, a, a assembled by then governor ordered by Governor Mario Cuomo at the time in New York found that the whole thing was a hoax. And to this day, you really you won't find Al Sharpton. He never apologized for it. No, 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 no. Even though even though you know he's the first to the microphone when uh, demanding somebody else apologize. And, and you know what, you know, Steve, I, I get it. I get why this guy, uh, especially in the conservative press, why he gets a pass so often, because he's so daggone entertaining, and, and, and he's relentless. And, you know, when he was running for the, the Democratic nomination, he was a real thorn in the side of Democrats. And quite frankly, a lot of times, when he, like during those debates, I remember being at, at the debates covering them, and at the end of every single debate, my lead quote was a quote from, from Al Sharpton, who was not ever going to win, but it just got, went to the point of, of he was so much better and so much more interesting than any, you know, Joe Biden or... Oh, no, or no, no. yeah, or, but, but yeah, here's the thing, and you know this full well, Charles. Al Sharpton, you know, in his career, has called Greeks homos. He's call, he called David Dinkins the N word. Said you have the you you think you're the only N. You, you have the only N problem. Uh, you know the 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 Crown Heights riots. Um, you know, and and, and these the statements that he's alleged to make the Korean grocery boycott. And then there was Freddie's. Freddie's. Imagine imagine an MSNBC talk show host today or a Fox News talk show host. Could this be? Uh, could this have ever happened? If, if uh, 20 years ago or whatever, uh, this Fox News host was picketing in front of a 
black business owner in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, calling him a black interloper. Subsequently, that store was burnt down. Seven people were killed, including the owner of the store. Even though the host was never charged at all, could that man ever be a host or, or have a career? No, but that's Al Sharpton. Yeah, they, they, would be, they would be let out of town on a, on a stretcher with, with, with Al Sharpton leading the charge. Yeah, and uh, and it, and it's a, and it's a remarkable double standard. And 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 but but you know I, I do get that you know he, he's a, if you ever talk to him he's a very, he's a very funny guy he's very appealing there's and and he has that sort of that shtick about oh I'm I'm a fallen Christian but I'm trying I'm struggling I'm trying you know you know that's all that stuff is very appealing uh, uh, to somebody but but what I really don't get is I don't know I I don't know why the left I don't know why Democrats. He's such an embarrassment to Democrats, and he's such a discredit to Democrats. I don't get why they give him so much credibility, but that's what MSNBC does, and they give they give him a, a they give him a, a, a prime time thirty minute political show that is that except for its, its comic value is unwatchable, and it, it's actually so bad it's so bad that you have like Saturday Night Live uh, joke writers who watch it and do spoofs about it. For, for any liberal or any Democrat to, to draw, uh, to gain the attention of, of comic writers in America today, you've got to be really bad. You I, know? I, I love the way you start your piece. President Obama turns out to be an incompetent fraud who's never actually read the U.S. Constitution. Edward Snowden tucked tail and fled to Siberia. Washington National star Ryan Zimmerman can no longer be relied upon to scoop up a crazy bouncer just inside the third baseline, a pirouette, and throw like a, a laser to first baseman Adam LaRoche's mitt. And now we learn the Reverend Al Sharpton has been working for the man all along. <laughs> I, I, I was, I, uh, my editor um, noted last night that the man is supposed to be capitalized. I failed to <laughs> capitalize the man, and I forget that that is actually a proper noun. Charles, the man. it's always great to talk to you, sir. You folks, check it out at the at WashingtonTimes.com. Charles Hurt piece on um, on uh, Al Sharpton. We'll speak to you next week. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Steve. Take care, Charles. All right, just great stuff. All right, when we come back, it's Give Me Five. I hope you'll do that. And stay tuned right here on the Steve Malzberg Show, only on Newsmax Television. We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Malzberg Show. Tonight, we are a country awakened to danger and called to defend freedom. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. One day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Is your property a jungle choked with overgrown saplings and brush? Take back your land with a DR field and brush mower. Nothing stops the DR. Thick grass and weeds, out of control brush briars or canes, even three inch thick trees are no match for America's favorite brush mower. Lock it in and rip it up. Clear it out, clean it up, and rediscover the land you've lost. And with optional attachments, the self-propelled DR Field and Brush Mower converts into a finish mower, a snow thrower, a portable chipper, or a grader blade. It's a field and brush cutter and so much more. Call 1-800-515-4403 for a free buyer's guide and DVD. Learn how you can try a DR at home for six months. Savings of up to $400 and free shipping are now in effect. This offer won't last, so call 1-800-515-4403. Online at drfieldbrush.com. Attention seniors and baby boomers. A new website has been created just for you. MyBenefits811.com. At MyBenefits811.com, we reveal a weird trick that could help you add $152,000 to your Social Security payouts. For example, did you know how you file for Social Security can dramatically change the amount of money you collect? One simple step could add up to $1,000 to your monthly payouts. And other strategies we found reveal 33 ways for big savings on your health care. At MyBenefits811.com, you will also discover how you could save up to 50% on your groceries.
along with 49 other ways to save as much as $50,000 starting today. Newsmax says MyBenefits811.com is a critical resource for anyone over the age of 50. So go to MyBenefits811.com now to find out how you could add extra money to your Social Security checks. That's MyBenefits811.com. MyBenefits811.com. Federal and state authorities urge every American family to have an emergency radio. It can save you and your loved ones from disaster. Now, Newsmax has an incredible offer for you. Get our weather band emergency radio free. This emergency radio picks up AM, FM, and the NOAA weather band. It even works without batteries. Essential in an emergency. Call the number below right now and you'll get this emergency radio plus two great publications, including the award-winning Newsmax magazine. Each month, Newsmax brings you the important stories you won't see anywhere else. Plus, you'll get incisive commentary from David Limbaugh, George Will, Michael Reagan, Ben Stein, Dr. Laura, and more. Ben Stein says Newsmax reveals the unafraid, uncomplicated, bare-knuckles truth about today's dangerous world. Mike Reagan says, I guarantee that you'll love Newsmax magazine. This emergency radio offer with Newsmax magazine won't last long. Order online or call the number on your screen right now. What can that be? 52-year-old male complaining of chest pain. Clear. Heart attacks can happen at any time. My name is Dr. Crandall, and as a cardiologist, I tell my patients that they need to be aware of the hidden symptoms of a heart attack. Here's the truth. If you suffer cardiac arrest outside of a hospital, you have just a 7% chance of surviving. That is why I've created this simple heart test to help you determine your own risk of heart disease. Go online today and in just two minutes, you'll discover your risk of suffering a heart attack, how you score on my heart disease risk factor scale, plus the key warning signs your heart is in trouble. Over two million Americans have already taken my simple heart test and I urge you to do so now before it's too late. Take your free online heart test today and discover how to get Dr. Crandall's bestseller, The Simple Heart Cure. Go to www.hearttest411.com today. In 2014, half of your friends, family, and neighbors may lose their jobs, all while you're robbed of 90% of your life savings, investments, and home's value. Controversial economist Robert Wiedemer, who was the only expert to predict the recession, has released a startling video with shocking evidence that the powers that be have tried to ban. But that hasn't stopped 50 million people from getting the truth. Watch it at AFTbook.com. That's AFTbook.com. Hi, right, folks. Welcome to Give Me Five. Uh, you know all about uh, Bush derangement syndrome and, of course, uh, Cheney derangement syndrome and Palin derangement syndrome, and uh, the list might be extended uh, pretty soon. Anyway, uh, George W. Bush, who has stayed out of the public light for most of uh, Obama's uh, five years, will never criticize Obama, uh, has taken to painting. He paints. And, and by some uh, estimates and some critiques, he's uh, doing pretty good at it. Of course, the haters, those suffering from Bush derangement syndrome, uh, are coming out of the woodwork, uh, and they're tearing him apart. Uh, first of all, here's, here's, a, here's 30. This is a self-portrait of uh, George W. Bush. You see the actual picture, and you see him. That's not bad. I can't do that. I can't do that. That's pretty good. Who knew this guy had that kind of talent? Uh, you know, who knows who's a painter? All right, so there's that. Now, there's this guy uh, who writes for The, uh, the Guardian, his name is uh, Jonathan Jones, and our friend Tim, uh, Tim Graham of Media Research Center made us aware of this. He calls uh, uh, W that monster, and he calls the paintings the art of Forrest Gump. Okay, um, his portrait of Putin, let's put up Putin, 31. His portrait of Putin looks like something you would find in one of America's trash-rich Salvation Army stores, so he's trashing America too, and buy to laugh at it. It's got a classic amateur clumsiness and oddity to it. Bush has attempted to render shadow and shape in stylish blocks of fawn and wood chip and cookies and cream, but they don't sit right, and the whole head looks mildly crazed. Perhaps this mad look is what is meant by revealing Putin's soul, but it seems inept rather than insightful. Um, all right, let's go on. Let's go on to the next one. And here's uh, 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 from India, uh, Moman Singh. And uh, we can put that one up, we've got 32. 
I'll go on as we read. It looks as if Bush's arts, co arts coach showed him paintings by no less a model that the great pop portraits Alex Katz, whose semi-abstract, wide-eyed style and flat backgrounds has um, ham-fisted daubs vainly echo. But the result lacked coherence or vitality. This is the art of Forrest Gump. <laughs> Bush derangement syndrome. All right, here, here's another one. Silvio B uh, Berlusconi. Look at this one side by side. That's pretty good. And there is a style to it. There's a style to it. You know, uh, I mean, uh, how could you tear this apart? That's pretty darn good. So the guy writes, idiocy in the art has its charm. In the man who ran the free world into blood-stained buffers, those charms quickly sour. These empty-headed daubs look the work of someone you wouldn't trust to mow a lawn without cutting someone's foot off. Um, what, a, what a stupid thing to say. Let's, well, look, let's look at some more uh, while we can here. Here's his uh, George W. Bush painting his daddy, George H. W. Bush. There you go. That's, I'll tell you, I would be proud to buy that and hang that. Man, are you kidding me? Um, you want to see uh, Hamid Karzai? Here's Hamid Karzai coming up next. Look at that. Well, it's not meant to be an exact replica. It's not meant to be an exact copy of the photo. It's got a, a, what, what, you know, a, the, the Bush style, whatever that is. And uh, let's finish it out with uh, Nori al-Maliki. Pretty good. Pretty good. And uh, so he, he specializes in world leaders. He gave one to Jay Leno on, the, on Jay Leno's show, a portrait of Jay Leno. Leno loved it. It was great. The hatred. Now, now that you've, you've seen these portraits for yourself, are they brilliant? I'm not an art, art critique or critic or, or whatever, uh, but they look pretty good to me. I can't draw a straight line. For someone like, uh, like uh, Jonathan Jones to say it's the art of Forrest Gump, and to, you know, and then of course get the political shots in, not only at President Bush, but at America, you know, looking like this would be something you would find in one of America's trash rich Salvation Army stores. Uh, we know where this guy's coming from. It's obvious. And unfortunately, there is no cure for Bush derangement syndrome. I'm sorry to say, he's probably infected for the rest of his life. So take pity on uh, Mr. Jones as you uh, read his nonsense uh, now and in the future. And if George W. Bush wants to do a portrait of me, I would be honored beyond belief. On the Steve Malzberg Show, on Newsmax Television, don't go away. The Steve Malzberg Show. Hi, Tom Parent here for DR Power Equipment. Is your driveway a bumpy road full of potholes, washboard, and ruts? Well, for lots of folks that live in the country, this is a normal ride. But it doesn't have to be this way. Not when you own a DR Power Grader. Tow the Power Grader behind your riding mower, utility tractor, or ATV. With each pass, the Power Grader loosens, redistributes, and levels surface materials. Potholes and ruts are filled in, washboard is smoothed out, and your resurfaced driveway is ready to roll. Call 1-800-795-0332 for a free buyer's guide and DVD. Learn how you can try a DR at home for six months. And now for a limited time, you can save up to $210 and receive free shipping. This offer won't last, so call 1-800-795-0332. Online at drpowergrader.com. Meet John and Nancy. Like many people, John and Nancy have spent their whole lives working hard, saving their money and investing wisely, knowing that it would pay off in the end. But the reality is, today's world is not the same as it was. John and Nancy's stocks have taken them on a serious roller coaster ride, and it's all but destroyed their retirement funds. Their house is not even close to being worth what they paid, and to boot, their middle-class paychecks no longer cover their costs. All that hard work and smart investing has gotten them nowhere. In fact, they are no longer thinking about when they will retire, they're wondering if they'll retire. Then one day, John and Nancy heard about a man named Tom Hutchison, a veteran of Wall Street for over two decades. Tom noticed that the wealthy invested differently than normal people, and their methods seemed to be a secret they didn't want to share. So Tom left his job, compiled the strategies, and published them in the controversial book, 
powerful secrets to achieve superior returns. John and Nancy immediately picked up a copy, began investing, and never looked back. Thanks to powerful secrets, John and Nancy now have investments that pay up to 20% a year. They learned about unique tax advantaged investments, and their favorite chapter revealed a strategy that anyone can use to turn $50,000 into $1 million. Now, John and Nancy have control of their financial future in this new reality, and they have peace of mind about their investments that they never had before. Best of all, they are back on track to a secure retirement. To get your free copy of the book, Powerful Secrets to Achieve Superior Returns, simply visit www.myfinancialage.org. Hi, I'm Mike Reagan. If you think the worst of Obamacare is behind us, think again. Soon as new rules will affect every business, every insured person, and every Medicare recipient. That's why you need to protect yourself, your family, and your business with the Obamacare Survival Guide. It's easy to read, the fastest way for you to understand this law. The Obamacare Survival Guide gives you the tips, loopholes, and strategies you need to know. If you're insured on Medicare, a business, a medical professional, just about anyone, you need to get the Obamacare Survival Guide. It's the number one New York Times bestseller, and already more than a half a million Americans have gotten their copy. Newsmax says it's the best guide to the new law. The Obamacare Survival Guide is at bookstores everywhere or get Newsmax's $4.95 special offer and save $15 off the cover price. Just go online now or call us today. Imagine if you had a secret code for making money, a code buried deep within biblical texts, a code that certain investment titans have quietly exploited to mass billions. And what if this code could be used by you, today, to unlock vast amounts of wealth safely and ethically? Investment expert and former pastor Sean Hyman says there is such a code. He calls it the Biblical Money Code. Sean credits this code for helping him turn his father's $40,000 retirement account into $396,000. And today, you have the chance to tap into this life-changing Biblical Money Code by visiting moneycode50.com. That's moneycode, the number 50.com. At moneycode50.com, you will find a free video that describes how you could use this biblical code in your own life to get out of debt and invest for profits. That's moneycode50.com. Hi, it's Steve Malsberg, and coming up on the final hour of today's Steve Malsberg Show, Senator Mike Lee from the great state of Utah will join us. Uh, he wants the uh, Republicans to uh, end cronyism and to find an alternative to Obamacare. And he has a word of warning for a, uh, the Comcast merger, what it can mean for conservative media. Then the Malsberg panel will be here. And then uh, we're going to play an interview that we had a little technical difficulty with yesterday. You're not going to want to miss uh, Mary Madeline. Uh, yesterday, uh, she had some great things to say about Diane Feinstein and the whole uh, war against uh, Bush and Cheney on the uh, enhanced interrogation. That, one more Gimme Five, and more on this hour of the Steve Malzberg Show on Newsmax Television. Five, four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studios, this is the Steve Malzberg Show. Be a part of the action by calling toll-free 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. Or email Steve at Show at Newsmax.com. Here is Steve Malzberg. All right, folks, uh, welcome aboard. Big hour coming up here. You're not going to want to miss any of it. Um, you know, in, in the wake of this uh, horrific uh, stabbing spree at the uh, high school outside of Pittsburgh, and, of course, uh, the call for uh, guns and, you know, common sense dictates if you have a gun to protect yourself um, or your family that uh, you'll be protected uh, better than in a place where there is no gun. But Eric Holder wants to make it so that even if you have a gun, it only can be used by you. 
That means if you have a gun in the home and you're incapacitated, let's say, God forbid, or you, you know, it's your gun and your wife knows how to use it, she wouldn't be able to use it. Listen to Eric Holder here in Cut 19. Give a listen to this. I mean, I think that one of the things that we learned in when we were trying to get past those, those common sense reforms um, last year, Vice President Biden and I had um, a meeting with a group of technology people and talked about how um, guns can be made more safe by making them either through fingerprint identification, um, the gun talks to a, a bracelet or something that you might wear, um, how guns can be used only by the person who is uh, lawfully in um, possession of, of the weapon. So he wants you to wear a bracelet of some sort um, that would allow you to use the weapon. So let's say it's the bracelet idea. Don't you love the bracelet idea? First of all, if you have a right to carry and you have a concealed weapon, <laughs> you're alerting the bad guys, hey, I got this bracelet on that indicates that it's going to enable my gun. So you're a walkie, walking advertisement, which, you know, there's positive and negatives. The criminal will just go to somebody who doesn't have the bracelet, and therefore you can assume that they have a sign on them that says, I have no gun. Um, it's, it's, it's just bad news. It's really bad news. Here's more from uh, Attorney General Eric Holder. So it's, it's those kinds of things that I think we want to try to um, explore so that we can make sure that people have the ability to enjoy their Second Amendment rights while at the same time decreasing the um, misuse of, um, of weapons that lead to uh, the kinds of things that we see on a daily basis, you know, where people, kids, and kids especially, um, are, are struck down. Okay, I, I, I don't see. Kids are struck down. You take any of these mass shootings involving kids or anybody, th that person owned that gun. Okay, they bought it legally, they owned the gun. So they would have the bracelet, if you will, or whatever mechanism to fire the gun. How would that have, present, have prevented any of the deaths that we hear about in the news all the time? And the answer is it would not have. If he's talking about kids accidentally getting shot with guns that they pick up on the table or a brother shoot, picks up, God forbid, and shoots a sibling or whatever, that, those are tragedies. But that speaks to the responsibility of the gun owner. And those deaths, those accidental gun deaths, okay, with, uh, within the home are so rare Again, many more kids die in, in the bathtub, die of strangulation from the blinds. We've been through all these uh, statistics over and over again on this show with various guests, including the great John Lott. So I don't know what he's talking about. I, I don't know what the context of that was, uh, as we've seen see almost every day. You're talking about drive-bys and gang shootings? Well, anybody who has a gun that they buy legally, illegally, whatever, they're going to get the bracelet with it or the mechanism by which to fire the gun. All right, we are joined right now uh, by Senator Mike Lee, uh, Republican from the great state of Utah, who we welcome back to the show. Senator, good to talk to you again, sir. Good to be with you, Steve. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I know it's been a busy day there in the Senate. Before we get to a bunch of stuff, the great piece you wrote at National Review on what the Republicans need to do in your view on, uh, on, uh, on cronyism and, and, and Obamacare, uh, let me ask you about uh, what's going on in the Senate, and that is uh, this attempt to... Um, to, you know, to, to spread, I guess, Bush derangement syndrome and bring up Bush and Cheney as the boogeyman again and as we head towards November and Dianne Feinstein saying that she's outraged and this report will show that, you know, uh, Dick Cheney and George Bush were un-American in their actions when, you know, we've had advisors to both Bush and Cheney on this show in the past two days and they say Dianne Feinstein knew about all of this, as did most members on that committee, because they were informed along the way as this was happening. Yeah, I, that may well be the case. Uh, you know, to be perfectly honest, I'm not familiar with these events. These predate the time when I was sure, in the Senate. Sure. But, uh, yeah, sometimes uh, in Washington, without speaking to the facts of this particular uh, set of circumstances, um, sometimes you'll find uh, members who will speak out and express outrage once something becomes public when, in fact, they've been apprised of it all yeah, along. Yeah, so. very sad. All right, uh, t talk about... Um, you, you wrote a, a very detailed column uh, about uh, in the on National Review about how Republicans, you know, have attacked Obama for various issues, including uh, cronyism and, and his economics. And, and you have some advice uh, for Republicans going forward. Yeah, I, I think that what we need to do is to protect the American people from the sort of crony capitalist collusion that often occurs between big government, big business, and big special interests. What we need to be focused on is... Uh, 
uh, the need to create jobs and promote economic growth and opportunity by allowing small business and forcing big business to compete on a level playing field where success depends on customer service uh, and not on political connections. So I, I think this is an important thing to bring out now. I think this fits neatly within uh, what Republicans are supposed to stand for, and uh, it, it's something that I think will help expand our reach as Republicans. Well, you know, and you also believe that uh, Republicans need to present an alternative to Obamacare, and I, I want you to, to, to expand upon that. But also, you know, this is at a time where you've seen in the House, for instance, uh, the Republicans, John Boehner at the helm, of course, have uh, said to, uh, to Congressman Camp, for instance, no, no, no way we're tackling tax reform right now. Uh, we have this thing called Obamacare on the table. Uh, we don't want to muddy the waters. We don't want to bring up anything else, uh, tax reform or anything, going forward between now and the, uh, the November election. So uh, do you, what do you think of that strategy? And then talk about what you'd like to see, possibly, as an alternative to, uh, to Obamacare. Well, I, I, I respectfully but strongly disagree with that kind of strategy, the one that says let's just sit back and allow uh, Obamacare to do uh, the work for us, to bring us an election in November. That, uh, that doesn't really work, and experience has taught us that we as Republicans are more likely to win elections when we have our own agenda. And so that's one of the reasons why it's important to get behind this anti-crony capitalism agenda right now. And we need to do it for several reasons. See, we need to do it to fix the economy. We need to do it because it's a matter of basic justice. And we need to do it because we purport to be the party of free enterprise and equal opportunity. And so it's important for us to get behind things that we're for in addition to calling out the things that we're against. And so that's why I'm you know, supporting the Export-Import Bank Termination Act and uh, the RAINS Act, the Regulations from Executive in Need of Scrutiny Act, which, which has as its aim uh, r reforming our federal regulatory system. Um, we, we've got a lot of these proposals that Republicans have backed, but that we have yet to fully connect uh, to the public in terms of explaining how some of these policies will actually promote economic mobility. Uh, particularly among the poor and the middle class. And that's what we've got to do a better job of doing. Well, of course, uh, turning, uh, it's one thing to present that, and I think it's important, but to turn it into actual policy, uh, first the House would have to bring it up, and assuming they've got something through the House, there's no way on the face of the earth, I'm sure you'd agree, Senator, that Harry Reid is going to want anything to do with anything uh, that uh, any of you, uh, with the little R next to your name, uh, decides to, uh, to fight for or try to bring to the floor for a vote. Well, perhaps not, but if that's the case, that's all the more reason why we should be able to use this as a tool for explaining how we would govern differently, how the, the Senate would function differently uh, if it were under the control of Republicans. You know, if, if um, Mitch McConnell were the majority leader instead of Harry Reid, certain things would happen very differently around this place. I think that's part of what we need to message. And, and what about Obamacare? Is there a particular plan that, uh, that uh, you're in favor of? Is there anything, uh, or is it just that you feel, uh, and again, nothing uh, on this issue, certainly nothing is going to get past uh, the Senate. So just uh, that you, need, you feel the Republicans need to rally around one plan and, and go out there and run on it as well as running against what we now have? In time, yes. In time, I think Republicans will need to rally around a single plan. But right now, we don't need one plan. We need 10 or more. We need at least 10 Republican alternatives to Obamacare to move forward. And they need to have some common themes. They need to use uh, uh, tax code incentives, whether credits or deductions or something in between. Uh, we need to use the tax code to help encourage Americans to buy health insurance to Health insurance needs to be portable from state to state and from job to job. And whatever plan we adopt then needs to put uh, patients and their doctors back in charge of making health care decisions rather than leaving those decisions to government bureaucrats in Washington. Uh, but like I said, we need 10 uh, plans that have those characteristics to emerge. And from those 10, uh, I, I think we will be able to select the best one and eventually put something through that can pass. Let me, let me ask you about something that uh, really is uh, very, very troubling to a lot of people. Um, Harry Reid, on a daily basis now, is going to the floor of the Senate, and he is 
uh, blasting the Koch brothers and calling them, I mean, you want to blast them, that's fine. You want to say you disagree with them and you don't like their commercials, that's fine. Uh, but he's calling them un-American. And, and I mean, I, 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 you know, to me, the, this, this kind of dovetails in with the, the CEO of Mozilla. You know, he gave a, a check to Prop 8 back in uh, six years ago, and now he's out of a job. Um, and and it, it, it's troublesome. It's very troublesome to the, uh, to the general public to, to see the majority leader of a Senate go after two men for be daring to be billionaires, even though they're two of the most charitable men in the world, uh, because he disagrees with them, and then call them and label them un-American. It's almost unprecedented. Yeah, I think it's really sad. I think it's unfortunate and it's unnecessary for him to personalize it like that, especially when the men that he's talking about are trying to promote constitutionally limited government, the kind of government that our founding fathers fought hard to put in place. They're seeing the greatest civilization the world has ever known uh, being put on a wrong course by failed progressive policies that have actually enhanced rather than diminished the, the income inequality that Yep. Our friends on the left uh, uh, so like to uh, cry out against. And uh, I, I think it's sad, and I think it's uh, ultimately misguided. One more. Uh, Comcast. You've talked about the Comcast deal pending uh, uh, and how it c could be a threat to conservative media. Uh, explain. Well, one of the concerns that I asked uh, about at the hearing this morning in the Senate Judiciary Committee uh, just relates to the combined market share that these two companies would have uh, at the end of the day if the merger went through. And I wanted to find out whether or to what extent um, there was any way to ameliorate those concerns or to assuage those concerns that some people have expressed to me, suggesting that NBC, whose who's, um, uh, liberal political leanings are no mystery to anyone, uh, w w which is tied up, um, uh, you know, it's, which is owned by Comcast, uh, w would end up playing some kind of a role uh, with a larger post-merger company in locking out more conservative content, uh, especially in political news reports. Are you convinced that that will not be the case? You know, I, I, it's difficult to tell at this point. Um, but you're concerned I, enough to, to investigate it further? I, I've heard enough concerns raised by enough people that I think it's worth asking the question. Okay. Uh, Senator, thank you so much for your time, sir. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Senator Mike Lee, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Steve Malsberg Show. And uh, that is, uh, that is a, a, a big story and uh, something that we should keep an eye on. Uh, and I'm sure Mike Lee will uh, investigate that further, as he's indicated. When we come back... It's the panel, and it's coming your way <laughs> if you stay there. Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax Television. We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Malsberg Show. Tonight we are a country awakened to danger and called to defend freedom. <laughs> by the Comptemberg Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Once you cut a tree down, what do you do about the stump? Grind it down with a new DR Stump Grinder. The fast, easy, and affordable solution for stump removal. Thanks to the power of a world-class engine and carbide-tipped cutting teeth, the DR Stump Grinder tackles any size stump. With each pass, these teeth quickly shave the stump down, taking a remarkable 400 bites per second. In no time, the stump is completely gone. All that's left behind is a pile of wood chips. Get behind the power of a DR Stump Grinder to rid your property of tree stumps forever. Call 1-800-799-1157 for a free buyer's guide and DVD. Learn how you can try a DR Stump Grinder at home for six months. Savings of up to $400 and free shipping are now in effect. This offer won't last, so call 1-800-799-1157. Online at drstumpgrinder.com. Federal and state authorities urge every American family to have an emergency radio. It can save you and your loved ones from disaster. Now, Newsmax has an incredible offer for you. Get our weather band emergency radio free. This emergency radio picks up AM, FM, and the NOAA weather band. 
It even works without batteries. Essential in an emergency. Call the number below right now and you'll get this emergency radio plus two great publications, including the award-winning Newsmax magazine. Each month, Newsmax brings you the important stories you won't see anywhere else. Plus, you'll get incisive commentary from David Limbaugh, George Will, Michael Reagan, Ben Stein, Dr. Laura, and more. Ben Stein says Newsmax reveals the unafraid, uncomplicated, bare-knuckles truth about today's dangerous world. Mike Reagan says, I guarantee that you'll love Newsmax magazine. This emergency radio offer with Newsmax magazine won't last long. Order online or call the number on your screen right now. Hi, I'm Mike Reagan. If you're a senior or baby boomer, you may be missing out on some important information. Tens of millions of boomers are set to retire, yet many don't know that how you file your Social Security can dramatically change the amount of money you collect. That's why Newsmax created a special report offering you the best strategies to maximize your Social Security benefits. For example, this report reveals a weird trick that could help you add up to $152,000 to your Social Security payouts. It also shows how some qualifying recipients can add up to $1,000 to their monthly payments. To get your copy with our free offer, along with seven additional money-making booklets, simply go online. Newsmax says this report is a critical resource for anyone over the age of 50. So go to our website today and find out if you qualify to add extra money to your Social Security. Remember, it's your money. You deserve the most back in your retirement. What can that be? 52-year-old male complaining of chest pain. Clear. Heart attacks can happen at any time. My name is Dr. Crandall, and as a cardiologist, I tell my patients that they need to be aware of the hidden symptoms of a heart attack. Here's the truth. If you suffer cardiac arrest outside of a hospital, you have just a 7% chance of surviving. That is why I've created the Simple Heart Test, to help you determine your own risk of heart disease. Go online today, and in just two minutes, you'll discover your risk of suffering a heart attack, how you score on my heart disease risk factor scale, plus the key warning signs your heart is in trouble. Over two million Americans have already taken my simple heart test, and I urge you to do so now before it's too late. Take your free online heart test today and discover how to get Dr. Crandall's bestseller, The Simple Heart Cure. Go to www.hearttest411.com today. In 2014, half of your friends, family, and neighbors may lose their jobs, all while you're robbed of 90% of your life savings, investments, and home's value. Controversial economist Robert Wiedemer, who was the only expert to predict the recession, has released a startling video with shocking evidence that the powers that be have tried to ban. But that hasn't stopped 50 million people from getting the truth. Watch it at AFTbook.com. That's AFTbook.com. Get off the sidelines and be a part of the show. Call Steve toll-free at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. Here is Steve Malzberg. All right, folks, it's panel time. And while we are out looking actively, we have a search team out for John Gizzi. Uh, we're joined by Hank Scheinkopf, president of Scheinkopf Communications. And uh, always good to see you, sir. You say, always good to see you, Steve. Always good to see you, Steve. <laughs> Only kidding. You just right. ask me what to do and I'll do it. All right, let, let, let's talk a little bit about, uh, first, before we uh, get into uh, Iran and other things, uh, there was a, a vote in the uh, House, the uh, uh, House uh, uh, Committee on uh, Ways and Means voted along party right. lines to recommend uh, uh, the Justice Department consider criminal prosecution uh, against Lois Lerner. Um, we heard from a, a member of that committee earlier in the show, Congressman right. Tim Griffin, a former U.S. attorney, who told us, quote, there is substantial evidence that uh, she has committed uh, criminal acts. So that being the case, but there's no way in heck that uh, Eric Holder will ever do that, will he? Well, not likely. I mean, look, the Justice Department did not suddenly become partisan. It's been that way probably since uh, before the Palmer raids of the 20s, so 1920s, which is quite a while ago. So that's not, no, not any news here. What is news is that uh, people would actively stand up and, and accuse an official of an administration of doing something criminal. Now, we last had this when? Um, what president was accused of criminal acts? Well, that was uh, if you're talking about President Nixon? 
you know, Nixon, uh, we impeached Clinton. We impeach Clinton. Uh, it goes on and on. Yeah, this well, partisan, he, he, he committed the partisan, perjury, yeah. The partisan, well, I'm not sure about that. The partisan nonsense continues. Well, you, so you think there's you think that there's no scandal at the at the IRS? You think you agree with Barack Obama? No, who told, I don't. Okay, then then what explain. I do agree what I do agree with is that the taking uh, using the Fifth Amendment privilege is guaranteed by the Constitution, and I do believe in grand juries, and I do believe in presentation of evidence before we convict someone in public. All right, that's well, fine. All right. Well, how about the Justice Department looking into it? Uh, you know, they, you know, there is they no, have, there is know, no question. The Justice Department will investigate these charges. Right, no but, but, okay. Now, you know, you, you talk about. Well, I don't want to get into Bill Clinton didn't commit perjury, uh, but uh, you know, he, he lied on the oath. That's that's perjury. It doesn't matter what it's about. And then we were, then there was something else that you brought up that I also wanted to challenge you on, but I, I lost my train of thought. You on wanted that. to challenge me on the uh, no. Lerner and and uh, you want to challenge me on the stealing of the Constitution and the base from the White House while Reagan was president in Iran Gate? Don't do that, okay? <laughs> don't no, do I that. No, I don't. I don't think. I don't think that's been that's, that's been dis bad. That's, that's 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 been disproven. But that, but, but, but not disproven. They went. A lot of people went to jail. But but, but, but let's go on. Oh, I thought you're talking about. Uh, I thought you're talking about the supposed deal uh, with uh, with Reagan and the uh, the mullahs of Iran. I don't believe that. For no, well, that's seconds. what I was talking about when I said disproven. All right, so let, let, let's move on. Um, tomorrow, by the way, the. Um, the uh, House Oversight Committee is going to vote uh, to uh, hold uh, Lois Lerner in contempt. Right. Um, so we'll see. Oh, here's the thing. Fifth Amendment. Sure. You said she has a right to the Fifth Amendment. Absolutely. Well, Trey Gowdy, uh, also with a, a very uh, staunch legal background, um, said that once you, and, and by the way, Alan Dershowitz and others have agreed, once you, as she did, come up with an opening statement and say, I didn't do this, and blah, 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 and explain it, and then say, oh, by the way, I take the Fifth Amendment, you lose your right to take the Fifth D Amendment, different, which is what she did. Different issue. She ought to find better lawyers. All right, so then she then in this case, she might have blown her chance to, Possible. to, to keep the Fifth Amendment. Possible. All right, let, let's talk about Iran, because I, I know you, 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 when we were talking before uh, you came on, um, very interesting comment that you had about Iran. You said, look, Iran's, Iran's right back to what they were doing before there was any uh, cockamamie agreement. Cockamamie is my word. There's not, this is not about partisanship. This is about the security and protection of this nation. And it is patently idiotic to believe that the Iranians will not do exactly what they say. Hitler said exactly what he would do, and he did it. When crazy people talk in world politics, you have to listen. You have to listen carefully because they tend to do it. Look at the Balkans of 20 years ago. Look at what is going on today. Iran said it's going to destroy the state of Israel and blow it up. Do you think they're kidding? Iran said the next is the great Satan. That's us. Do you think they're kidding? And with the reduction of sanctions and the removal of them, they're going back to doing exactly what they were doing because they don't believe for 30 seconds that the Kerry Obama team has the ability to stop them. That's why this is going on. So, what, what, so what's wrong with Obama then? What's he think? He's not thinking. He's not thinking. He actually believes that if you talk nicely to people who want to kill you, they will stop. The problem is when a man has a gun, you use a gun. And I'm not suggesting you go to war, but what I am suggesting is that you, you do the duty that you swore to do, which is to protect the citizens of this nation from external and internal threat. Right, He's not done that. Let's talk about uh, the Middle East uh, so-called peace talks, and of course, uh, they're off on hold, whatever you want to say. Patently idiotic. Okay, well, okay, John Kerry, uh, before the Congress the other day, uh, blamed both sides equally, but, but put a special blame, if you will, on, on Israel. Israel's uh, Netanyahu's office is now blasting uh, they have a name for what he said, uh, that, that, that speech that he gave before the Congress where he took Israel to task. I mean, this is, uh, John Kerry has become the Palestinian spokesman. This is not about Palestinians or Israelis. This is about incompetence in the Obama administration, incompetence in Middle East policy, not understanding who they're dealing with and under what conditions. Yes, everybody should be asked to free 1,200 murderers so they can run around killing more people. That's patently idiotic. And if you read the Israeli press, which I did, Last Friday, let's see, in Yudhi Dachanot, the most widely read newspaper in the country, the headline was Stirat Lechi. We had a slap in the face from the administration. They want to release 1,200 lunatics. That's far more than they wanted before. And by the way, afterwards, Abbas wants to then proclaim the, the Palestinian, the, 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 the so-called Palestinian state at the UN and declare Jerusalem as the capital of such a state. What drugs are these guys on? Don't they understand what they're doing? And when you say what drugs are these guys on, you mean the U.S. administration? Yeah, what drugs are they on? They must be, they must be, there's something wrong because they don't get it. What everybody else sees, and to blame Israel, um, is extraordinary. Well, do you think there's a possibility that down the road, this administration with Kerry and Obama, or as you put it in that order, Obama and Kerry, uh, would recognize um, the, the Palestinian state at the U.N. as something they said they would never do? Look, 
after after all that's happened in the last couple of years in foreign policy with this administration, anything is possible. Would they undermine Israel to that extent? They might as well have done it already. The good news is, nothing, <laughs> the Arabs are fighting each other all day long, so it's not likely they can gang up on Israel. The other good news, and the real reason for some of this is probably that Abbas, uh, the head of the uh, uh, the, Palest uh, the Palestinian uh, authority. authority, whatever it's called, um, um, he uh, felt pressure because Hamas, the real, the true killers in Gaza, are suddenly becoming a much more militant this week to throw him off balance and don't want an agreement of any kind. So instead of Kerry blaming Israel, he ought to be blaming Abbas, but he's not going to do that because that's not popular. No. And Obama sat next to Abbas and called him a great man of peace. <laughs> I always, I tell you, people who kill people are my favorites. If they can just kill more Jews, they'll be even more popular. I, I mean, what I are we, are so. we, this is a guy who kills people. That's his job. All right. He did it very well beforehand, and I'm sure when he's out of office, he'll go back to doing it. The Democrat strategy going forward between now and November appears to be yeah. uh, re resurrect Bush Cheney through this enhanced interrogation report, uh, number one or number two, and number two or number one. Uh, is this uh, equal pay, equal work, which the Obama White House has been found to pay women uh, 88 cents on the dollar, and their explanation is there's mitigating circumstances. Well, there's mitigating circumstances that make this a non-issue nationally, but that doesn't stop the president from demagoguing it. So are these two issues, trying to uh, talk about a war on women by Republicans and Bush Cheney as boogeyman, is that going to save them in November? Um, more likely of the two, this, this is like a bad sale, you know, it's quite odd. Um, more likely the one that works better is war on women because that seems to have some resonance. Um, but Bush Cheney, at, you know, in American public life, they haven't been around for a good long time. So that's not going to work. And if you have to, and all, everything in politics, having worked on a lot of campaigns, is always about balance. So what's worse, um, war on women or health insurance up 30% in small companies over the last three years? Which is a war on everybody. So you have to determine what's worse. Yeah, well, I, I, you, you, you preach it to the choir with that one. That's what I love about you, Democrat with sanity, lots of sanity. And uh, I hope uh, you have a very, uh, a very uh, nice uh, Passover holiday. Thank you. And, um, you know, I know you're going to be eating a lot of matzo. What did you say? When we were, you uh, turn your bowels to sawdust. More I wish peace upon the world <laughs> that, that the Iranians don't get the bomb because the next stop will be a blue water fleet off the coast of New York. No, but don't worry because Barack Obama is going to give his Passover message soon and we're, the world will be saved. I feel much better. Already. Thank you very much. All right. Hank Scheinkopf, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the president of uh, Scheinkopf Communications here on the uh, C. Malzberg Show. And, of course, John Gizzi, um, I think, what's that? Oh, he was out uh, looking at uh, a new line of hats. Okay, well, next time he comes on, he'll, he'll, we could expect a new hat uh, from Mr. Gizzy. All right, folks, when we come back, like I said yesterday, we had some technical problems with an interview we did with Mary Madeline. You're going to want to hear this, what she says about Dianne Feinstein. Watch on the Steve Malzberg Show on Newsmax Television. We don't just talk about the news. We talk to those making news. This is the Steve Malzberg Show. In 2014, half of your friends, family, and neighbors may lose their jobs, all while you're robbed of 90% of your life savings, investments, and home's value. Controversial economist Robert Wiedemer, who was the only expert to predict the recession, has released a startling video with shocking evidence that the powers that be have tried to ban. But that hasn't stopped 50 million people from getting the truth. Watch it at AFTBook.com. That's AFTBook.com. Meet John and Nancy. They've spent their lives working hard and saving money, knowing that it would pay off in the end. But unfortunately, all that hard work and smart investing has gotten them nowhere. Then one day, John and Nancy picked up a free copy of Powerful Secrets to Achieve Superior Returns. This book revealed 24 little-known investments that put them back on track to a happy and secure retirement. Get your free copy of Powerful Secrets at MyFinancialAge.org. Meet Jim. Like many of us, Jim enjoys a busy life between work, family, and friends. His days zip along, and Jim has the energy to tackle almost anything. But lately, Jim's get up and go has literally taken on a new meaning. Jim's always put focus on a full night's sleep, but it seems like these days, he's up and down to go to the bathroom so many times he can barely wake up in the morning. Prostate concerns have him sad, tired, and worried. Activities that were once enjoyable now seem like a chore for Jim. 
His golf game is at the mercy of his bathroom schedule. Family outings are planned around it too. Jim even has difficulty going to the bathroom. He's tried so many prostate remedies he can't keep them straight. And nothing ever seems to help. Then Jim found out about Prostate Revive, the all-natural dietary supplement specifically formulated for men, targeted towards improving and sustaining normal prostate function. Prostate Revive includes 15 super ingredients never combined before, including saw palmetto extract, beta cytosterol, pomegranate fruit extract, selenium, and other high-quality nutrients. These targeted and all-natural ingredients promote healthy urinary flow and optimal prostate health. And the best part is, Prostate Revive was developed by a renowned medical doctor. Dr. David Brownstein personally formulated Prostate Revive with one goal in mind, to promote a healthy prostate gland. Thanks to Prostate Revive, Jim's got his life back. He gets a full night's sleep every night, and his friends and his wife can't believe he's the same guy. He has his old energy back, and no one has to wait for him. He doesn't even think about his prostate concerns anymore. Visit MedicSelect.com to take back your nights and improve your quality of life with Prostate Revive. Learn about our risk-free trial offer at ProstateRevive.com forward slash gym. Hi, I'm Mike Reagan. If you think the worst of Obamacare is behind us, think again. Soon as new rules will affect every business, every insured person, and every Medicare recipient. That's why you need to protect yourself, your family, and your business with the Obamacare Survival Guide. It's easy to read, the fastest way for you to understand this law. The Obamacare Survival Guide gives you the tips, loopholes, and strategies you need to know. If you're insured on Medicare, a business, a medical professional, just about anyone, you need to get the Obamacare Survival Guide. It's the number one New York Times bestseller, and already more than a half a million Americans have gotten their copy. Newsmax says it's the best guide to the new law. The Obamacare Survival Guide is at bookstores everywhere or get Newsmax's $4.95 special offer and save $15 off the cover price. Just go online now or call us today. Imagine if you had a secret code for making money, a code buried deep within biblical texts. A code that certain investment titans have quietly exploited to mass billions. And what if this code could be used by you today? to unlock vast amounts of wealth safely and ethically. Investment expert and former pastor, Sean Hyman, says there is such a code. He calls it the Biblical Money Code. Sean credits this code for helping him turn his father's $40,000 retirement account into $396,000. And today, you have the chance to tap into this life-changing Biblical Money Code by visiting moneycode50.com. That's moneycode, the number 50.com. At moneycode50.com, you will find a free video that describes how you could use this biblical code in your own life to get out of debt and invest for profits. That's moneycode50.com. We got the theme song back, so all is right with the world. And we welcome in the one and only uh, Mary Matlin, of course, served under three presidents. And uh, you know her, you love her. And along with her husband, James Carville, the author of Love and War, 20 years, three presidents, two daughters, and one Louisiana home. Hello, Mary. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. <laughs> I don't think that's about me. I think it's about marijuana. No, shh. Marijuana. But, but we could tell people it's about you. Uh... Well, I'm not That's marijuana. That's the beauty of poetic license. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. Unless, uh, unless uh, Mickey, uh, Peter, or Michael uh, want to dispute that, we'll go with that. Anyway, welcome aboard. Um, uh, let, let's start by talking about this, uh, you know, this uh, Diane Feinstein and the, uh, the, the report on uh, the uh, CIA interrogation techniques. You know, General Michael Hayden uh, uh, came out and said that uh, her emotions appear to be uh, such that 
uh, it will taint any report. And of course, it's a biased report. It was done by the Democrats, as Mark Thiessen pointed out to us yesterday. But because he used the word emotion, Andrea Mitchell, CBS, they're all piling on poor Michael Hayden now, not that he needs my defense, they're saying you don't talk. Even KT McFarlane on Fox said you don't talk about a woman that way. You see, this is a preview of what we're going to get with the Hillary election. Well, it'll, it won't ring true with the American public, and there's no other explanation. There, it it would be laughable if it wasn't so despicable, and you expect that kind of hackery out of some, someone like Nancy Pelosi, but not from Dianne Feinstein. It, this is way beyond hypocrisy. This is blatant, overt fabrication. She was there. Everybody approved of this. Everybody knew of it. In fact, right after, to uh, before 920, we were, Cheney had been, before 911 and before Bush's speech of 920, Cheney had been assigned Homeland Security, the new kind of, what? how do we have a Homeland Defense, Homeland Security, and she was our go-to guy in the Senate. This is, I can't even, and it's, she knows the, she knows the information, she knows the lives that were saved, she knows the plots that have been thwarted, and not only was it written all by Democrats, they didn't, they did not interview, Dianne Feinstein's staff did not interview one of the CIA intelligence officers involved in the program, which is ironic because Obama's White House cooperated with Zero Dark Thirty and has a lot of the same information in there, which demonstrably it says and states that, that these techniques did work. And I'll tell you, this is what's despicable about this is it has a very chilling effect on in our intelligence, which is already diminished because we don't have any human intelligence, and we have very little human intelligence given the nature of the, the enemy and the threat and the difficulty of infiltrating with human intelligence. So now the kind of intelligence that we can gather, like through these means, has been stopped. And this is, this is really serious security consequences I, i'm just i don't know what's got into diane feinstein i don't know i'd say it's worse than emotion it's something inexplicable and in and does not comport with her known reputation it's really sad all right well let me you you of course were were a uh, uh, top advisor to uh, to dick cheney uh were, were, were you ever you know for sure that diane feinstein was was aware of all of these uh, interrogation techniques and and the good they did at the time uh, yes, every and if she was on that committee, she was, and so was Nancy Pelosi, who was infamously a gang, a member of the gang of four. Of course, they all knew it. They're not just hypocrites. I'm saying again, they are liars, and they and they and they're or they're fools. Okay, they're not fools. Diane Feinstein, in particular, knows how intelligence works. It's not like you waterboard somebody, you have an enhanced inter an interrogation tactic, and they just spill the beans. It, that's not how it works. You piece together a mosaic. And in the case of uh, KSM, for instance, who was the mastermind of 9-11, he, we got to UBL, to Osama bin Laden, through his resistance of, of admitting that he knew the courier, Osama's uh, courier. I mean, that's how you piece it together. It's it's an art form. It's not a a specific science. And these guys are highly trained to do it. Right, what, what's the it, purpose it here? What, what's the intent? I mean, they've already called uh, a Bush and Cheney un-American based on this report. What's the ultimate goal here? All right, this is what it is. I'm so cynical, and this is why good people don't want to serve in public office anymore because all obama wants to do for these midterms which he is going his party's going to get wiped out on because of opposition intense opposition to his policy specifically the affordable care act he's trying to gin up they're trying to gin up their base all i got to do is gin up their base turn out their base and they have a fighting chance with in combination with their technology which remains superior to ours of stemming the what is going to be a tsunami midterm against them. So how do they do that? They pull out the old boogeyman, Cheney and Bush, and it's 
you know, it's right out of their playbook. That's to all political. Why do you think any right thinking, and I don't mean right left, I mean any normal, ordinary American is going to cast a vote uh, in these midterms, however, however many years after the fact, however demonstrable this secu- our intelligence has contributed to our security, are going to say, oh, Dick Cheney? And first of and 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 it's going to impact their vote. Let me tell you what Dick Cheney did because I was there. Because of his long years of experience with the uh, the first Gulf War and the dissemination or the uh, degradation of the former Soviet Union, he understood how imprecise intelligence can be. So he went to the CIA directly to the people who were collecting the information to see how it got up in its in the PDF to the PDF the president's daily brief and he under he understands intelligence he understands primary sources and the people that he talked to at the CIA were not chilled by his presence he didn't cherry pick he was trying to get the truth they loved that their that their direct information was being was not being translated or diluted going up the chain to get into these synchronized uh, synthesized reports and you can talk to any CIA guy, he'll tell you that. And, the, and what's super despicable about this is the Democrats, for their own political purposes for this midterm, are attacking our, the very public servants, our security professionals who cannot defend themselves or will not defend themselves because they fear uh, classifying their rebuttal would uh, compromise sources and methods. Uh, it, it, it's People should be outraged about this, but of course they won't because they're, everybody's just – this is the beauty of their tactic of sulling all politics because it makes people just roll their eyes and not even think about it. All right, very quickly, uh, uh, Mary, uh, we got about a minute and a half. Uh, it turns out a, the New York Times says a study released in January showed White House staff members on average make $0.88 cents for every dollar male staff or, uh, uh, earners earn. Uh, and and it, it's funny because now Jay Carney saying, well, there are mitigating factors that go into those statistics. Well, of course. So when they go around and say women make 77 percent on the dollar or 77 cents on the dollar, the same mitigating circumstances exist. They're, they're phony statistics, yet it didn't stop Obama today. He was out there with Lily Ledbetter talking about how the Republicans, you know, don't like women. And it's insane. Well, this is part of the same strategy. You're you are describing another tactic in the strategy of just kicking out the base. Any sane person knows that when women do equal work for an equal amount of time and do not choose to leave the workplace to take the burden of families go, falls pre- predominantly on women by their own Choice. They get the same. They get the same amount. Listen, they Ma- get the same amount. Mary, Mary, I gotta cut it short because the monkeys want to come back. No, we don't. Actually, we don't have the monkeys again. But I gotta go. Great talking to you. We'll talk to you again very soon. Thank you very much. Okay, love you, Stevie Wonder. Ciao, ciao. All right, Mary, Mary, where are you going to? That's the, I could ask her that now. That's a good question. All right, Mary Matlin. When we come back, folks, the panel uh, will weigh in on all of this right here on the Steve Malzberg Show on Newsmax Television. Abraham Lincoln began the war between the states with a single stated purpose, to preserve the Union. So it surprised everyone when in July of 1862, President Lincoln announced his intentions to issue an Emancipation Proclamation to free the Southern slaves. Lincoln was urged to delay his proclamation until the Union Army could boast a battlefield victory. That opportunity came at the Battle of Antietam, when Union forces drove Lee's army out of Maryland. Five days later, on September 22, 1862, President Lincoln issued the preliminary Emancipation Proclamation, stating slaves in those areas still in rebellion within 100 days will be freed. This action made slavery the focus of the war and ultimately caused France and England to withdraw their support of the South. The following January, Lincoln issued the actual Emancipation Proclamation, stating that all persons held as slaves within the rebel states are, and henceforth shall be, free. You're watching An American Moment on Newsmax TV.
your property a jungle choked with overgrown saplings and brush? Take back your land with a DR field and brush mower. Nothing stops the DR. Thick grass and weeds, out of control brush briars or canes, even three inch thick trees are no match for America's favorite brush mower. Lock it in and rip it up. Clear it out, clean it up, and rediscover the land you've lost. And with optional attachments, the self-propelled DR Field and Brush Mower converts into a finish mower, a snow thrower, a portable chipper, or a grader blade. It's a field and brush cutter and so much more. Call 1-800-515-4403 for a free buyer's guide and DVD. Learn how you can try a DR at home for six months. Savings of up to $400 and free shipping are now in effect. This offer won't last, so call 1-800-515-4403. Online at drfieldbrush.com. Attention seniors and baby boomers. A new website has been created just for you. MyBenefits811.com. At MyBenefits811.com, we reveal a weird trick that could help you add $152,000 to your Social Security payouts. For example, did you know how you file for Social Security can dramatically change the amount of money you collect? One simple step could add up to $1,000 to your monthly payouts. And other strategies we found reveal 33 ways for big savings on your health care. At MyBenefits811.com, you will also discover how you could save up to 50% on your groceries, along with 49 other ways to save as much as $50,000 starting today. Newsmax says MyBenefits811.com is a critical resource for anyone over the age of 50. So go to MyBenefits811.com now to find out how you could add extra money to your Social Security checks. That's MyBenefits811.com. MyBenefits811.com. What can that be? 52-year-old male complaining of chest pain. Clear. Heart attacks can happen at any time. My name is Dr. Crandall, and as a cardiologist, I tell my patients that they need to be aware of the hidden symptoms of a heart attack. Here's the truth. If you suffer cardiac arrest outside of a hospital, you have just a 7% chance of surviving. That is why I've created the Simple Heart Test, to help you determine your own risk of heart disease. Go online today. And in just two minutes, you'll discover your risk of suffering a heart attack, how you score on my heart disease risk factor scale, plus the key warning signs your heart is in trouble. Over 2 million Americans have already taken my simple heart test, and I urge you to do so now before it's too late. Take your free online heart test today and discover how to get Dr. Crandall's bestseller, The Simple Heart Cure. Go to www.hearttest411.com today. In 2014, half of your friends, family, and neighbors may lose their jobs, all while you're robbed of 90% of your life savings, investments, and home's value. Controversial economist Robert Wiedemer, who was the only expert to predict the recession, has released a startling video with shocking evidence that the powers that be have tried to ban. But that hasn't stopped 50 million people from getting the truth. Watch it at AFTbook.com. That's AFTbook.com. NASCAR fans can easily find their favorite drivers by simply looking at the cars as they fly by because there are corporate emblems on the hood of the car. In fact, they're all over the car. Though our clothing here in the Senate, we don't bear any commercial logos. Many Republican senators these days might as well wear Coke Industries insignias. But as members of the United States Senate, there should never be any doubt as to our sponsor, the American people. Oh, so profound, I, I want to cry. Welcome to Gimme Five. Now, in the last hour, we brought you Bush Derangement Syndrome, uh, the critique of his, uh, the harsh critique of his artwork. This is Koch Brother Derangement Syndrome, and it's very dangerous to call Americans un-American because you disagree with them, and to do it every single day as majority leader on the floor of the Senate is unprecedented, you know, really unprecedented in, in, in what's going on here. Uh, so I want you to go here. We got MSNBC. Dana Milbank of the Washington Post is on. Uh, and listen to him attack the Koch brothers. So Senator Harry Reid just tweeted, quote, many Republican senators might as well wear Coke insignias to donate, uh, to donate their sponsorship. Uh, why are Democrats hitting the GOP so hard on this issue, Dana? 
I think the real question, Reverend Al, is why uh, are, have they waited until now to do it? Um, Harry Reid has been out there uh, uh, delivering this message for weeks, and I think others are just realizing uh, the power of it. Look, everybody knows that uh, in politics you need demons, and uh, the Koch brothers uh, are uniquely qualified uh, uh, to play that role. I mean, they couldn't be any better for it if they were carrying around pitchforks and, and, and had horns. Pitchforks and horns. Let's see. Uh, Jews have horns. I don't know if they have pitchforks. And I don't know if the Koch brothers are Jewish or not, but that would be very interesting to find out. You know what? This is making me sick, and this should scare the heck out of all of us because they could do this to any of us. You know what? God forbid one of the Koch brothers are injured or hurt by a lunatic who follows Dana Milbank, who follows Harry Reid, or who follows Chuck Schumer. Then what are they going to do? Then what are they going to do? Attend the funeral? This is insane. I've never seen anything like this. This is, used to be America. No? More. It's uh, two of the, uh, of the wealthiest uh, people in the world, number five and six of the world's top billionaires, uh, and they've got their money from oil. It's the sort of thing that can really uh, motivate the Democratic base. Now, look, this is not uh, looking to be a great year for Democrats, but it's always better to be on the offensive uh, than it is playing defense, and I think this gives the Democrats something to be talking about other than uh, defending themselves. Yeah, create a boogeyman, attack them, and that's going to get you uh, to win elections. It shows you the sorry state of the Democrat Party. Ruth Marcus said the same thing about this phony issue of equal pay. Whether it's true or not, just go out there and motivate the women who, uh, if you say Lily Ledbetter, they, a bell clicks in their head. Doesn't matter if it's true. means the Democrats have nothing. Now, Charles Schumer, remember he was on Morning Joe? And Charles Schumer was pressed by Joe Scarborough to his credit, um, to Scarborough's credit, do you agree with Harry Reid that the Koch brothers are un-American? He had to ask him six times here. I'm, I'm asking gonna, a simple question here, I know, and I've but got I'm great not respect get into for you. It. Do you think that David Koch is un-American, or should Harry Reid apologize? I think the commercials he are running are against the American grain and un-American. Okay, yes. And I'd David say that himself? about. I'd say that about. I'd say. I think what Harry Reid was saying was the actions are un-American, and they are, and they should change. All right. Well, Chuck Schumer wrote a little letter to the Koch brothers um, for campaign contributions, ladies and gentlemen. A few years back, uh, 2009, from Charles Schumer thanking the Koch brothers and their political organization, Koch Pack, for a contribution. And we're putting it up on the screen, 41. Thank you so much for the generous Koch Pack contribution to my 2010 campaign for re-election to the United States Senate. And then he goes on and on, you know, to say every day I wake up, I serve the people, blah, blah, blah. So hypocrite, Schumer, hypocrite. And besides that, the Koch brothers have given hundreds of millions of dollars to health care and hospitals and cancer research in your home state, Chuck Schumer. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Harry Reid ought to, but he never will. Is there hope for Chuck Schumer to be ashamed of himself and admit he's a hypocrite? Steve Malzberg show <laughs> on Newsmax Television. The Steve Malsberg Show. Hi, Tom Parent here for DR Power Equipment. Is your driveway a bumpy road full of potholes, washboard, and ruts? 